Ahoy, wonders, and welcome back to the table. Mm. That's good tea. That's good tea. So, we're at a new town. Uh, yes. I, uh, Sir Human of uh, <laughs> the Sea, am ah, you, ready. Have you forgotten your alias already? No, no, I am Sheldon Flash. Okay, Very good. You. I was going to say, I've forgotten his <laughs> alias. <laughs> <laughs> Can't forget my alias. Be a little unfair for me. Ezra's been there for all of five minutes. It's been a <laughs> week. <laughs> uh, it's exciting. We're at a new port. There are so many things to do, so much to see, and there's nothing wrong with taking the back street here. Not in this town. You never know if you don't go. You never well, shine well, if you well, don't well. glow. Boom. Let me go ahead and put this down real quick. Yeah, where are we at currently? Bonk. We are at the merchant port. It's the merch port. They've got lots of good, uh, you know, t-shirts, some uh, some fidget spinners, uh, some of those pop-up things for your phone with That's the logo That's so 2017, on it. though, yeah. I think Ben. The, I think the artist Sorry. is around here. Somewhere. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but before we begin proper, I want to thank everybody for their flag submissions. Uh, the competition is closed now. We will be announcing the winner in a couple of weeks when we get the flag printed. Yes. Right on. So stay tuned for that. We will be in contact with the winner shortly, though. So. Anything else we need to pimp out? Are we ready to go? I am. Uh, Sheldon Flash is ready. All right, Sheldon. Well. <clears throat> You guys have all finished up your uh, loose ends. Uh, everyone who doesn't want to stay on the ship, so pretty much uh, I'm going to say Gopher is going to stay on board, Red's going to stay on board, uh, Pliskin, Risp is going to stay on board. Everyone else wants to get off the ship and just stretch their legs. All right. Surprised. I'm surprised, like, not everybody wants to get... Then again, I guess we were just out of port. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> That's fair enough. They uh, want. They they also are just want to make sure that whoever is also doing documentations of the boat is like not you know ruffling through things. Yeah. So Rummaging having a couple, they shouldn't rummage. having a couple of people who have a more more ties to the ship would be wiser in this point. All right. Uh, before we head up the stairs, I'm going to uh, take Nedra aside real quick and just tell her like like. So you want to go to the fight pit, right? She nods enthusiastically. Yes. <laughs> I say, okay, now, I have to do a couple of errands, but I have a task for you, and if you can get it done by the time I get back, I promise I will take you to the fight pit, and you can fight to your heart's content. What is this quest? <laughs> All right. I uh, show her back to, like, the quarters where I was teaching her to read, and I take out a parchment of paper with a bunch of dots on it and then one right next to it with the letter A. I need you to write this letter... As many times as you can on this sheet of paper, front and back. While we're walking around? No, you're going to stay here for a moment, and I will come back, and I will grab you, and if you've done a good job, we'll go to the fight pit. So you're asking the tiefling to stay at the docks to write some letters down. I'm teaching her how to write. This is how my master taught me. He taught like my master taught me. Sounds by like your sounds like your scrolls. master went off to go drink and then came back. <laughs> well, are you here? you're still here? <laughs> that yes. <laughs> <laughs> and look oh, how good. He oh is shit! At you're, you're still. Oh wow! Hey guy, who are you? <laughs> basically, he used his students as uh, people that would. They were basically copy machines for him. They would copy his scrolls down. <laughs> Anything that was getting too degraded, he would have them copy down. Be careful, this one shoots fire if you spell something wrong. <laughs> uh, roll pers their martial arts scrolls. Roll persuasion. All right. Uh, Versus Nedra's insight. Uh, 14. 14? You beat her. She's visibly unhappy with this little bit of detail, oh, but she'll she, she'll just like take the paper and just sit there. You just watch as like this massive. Just red woman like flumps on the floor, and all the cats around her is like, "What the fuck?" All right, now here's your quill, and you will copy that letter down as many times as you can. I will be back in a cup. I will be back in a few, and then we'll go to the fight pit, and you can beat up whatever you want. <sighs> okay. Besides, I need to pick us up some stuff. All right. So uh, while you guys were at the carve house, they gave you a small. The folks gave you a small map. So pretty much what you see before you is what you have. 
uh, there are numbers on there. If they, uh, they've told you what was uh, available to you uh, or places of interest that would befit you guys, if, they're, if you guys want to go anywhere specific, I'm going to say the NPCs, as you reach up the stairs, are going to go off on their own separate ways. Okay. You're welcome to follow them or to ask them where they're going, but for the most part, now it's up to you guys to decide where you want to go. And uh, Have you guys written down the areas, or do you need me to repeat? I wrote down most of the areas that I think I would find any real interest in. I didn't write down the Bard College, because I figure he wrote that down pretty handily. <laughs> Alrighty. So, uh, do you guys want to all go as a group, or do you want to uh, separate? I am not going to tell you you shouldn't be doing something, but I will <laughs> say this. It will help the, D the DM greatly if you stuck together. I'm not going to tell you you can't <laughs> go off on your own, though. Uh, I went up, and I, I'm just going to basically... Who all was going to be with us when we were talking to... Uh, yeah, when is that? Meeting? Oh, so yes, uh, that was uh, a few minutes ago. Who was in there? Was it was Riss was in there for the time being. Uh, Riss, you and oh god, i here. We go. Memories of fading. Well, we said we were going to meet at the shipwreck tavern. I assumed a conversation was going to happen there. Oh yes, no, that's that's right. You were going to meet. Uh, did we set up any sort of time for that? Because I, I would assume want, we did. I, I would want to inform everyone of that time before they all disperse. It's currently the morning, and Oso said that they're still kind of like prepping to get uh, the prince off the ship. Yes. So uh, he said, if we're not at the tavern. Uh, by afternoon in the evening, meet us at the uh, embassy, which is that giant 13 right there. Okay. That is the Ibercall embassy. Gotcha. All right, now I'm just going to put this out there. Uh, I need a few things, and I assume we need to scope out this carnival. Yes, I would agree. It is why Sheldon is here, and. Understandable. I, I assumed, my good friend <laughs> Sheldon, that that's why you joined us today. Absolutely. Uh, well, Sheldon, if you check out that map, you see that giant seven right there? God, it's a, a giant that, that <laughs> giant thing that goes off map. That's a giant Epcot-like dome. Ah. Ooh. And I assume they have little uh, shops and stalls in there. Oh, no, you're in the marketplace right now. Where you're walking out, oh. uh, you're pretty much standing in, like, the giant general area where they would get the sieves off the boat, and they're like, hey, do you guys want to have a grand old time buying stuff, merch, and all them other cool things? Yeah, we want to do that. <laughs> so why don't you head on down to the main marketplace right off the coastline, right next to that giant-ass building that's Ebercall Manor. All right. Is there any place around here that sells masks? And I'm talking, like, luchador style masks <laughs> you want to buy masks that would most likely want you to go to jojo's adventure bazaar all right well i need to make a stop there uh calliope what's what's your favorite thing to do around here like what she's uh calliope uh came here to speak with the calls but she does want to go meander about because she's like Looking around like, oh my god, like this is amazing. Like I finally have been here after I've only been here since I was eight. This is amazing. I get to see all these new things, and with all this shiny new gold currency I got with me, I could go buy some cool things. So she's not too worried about wasting time right now until it comes time for uh, the afternoon. She is most likely gonna go to JoJo's Adventure Bazaar as well. All right, well that works out for me. All right, Sheldon, do you and Calliope want to go to JoJo's uh, while me and Eloy check out the college? Uh, that that sounds fine. If, I mean, if you guys really wanted to do that on your own, I mean, I'm not going to stop you. I mean, I just <laughs> figured, uh, you know, I we've we've got our costumes ready to go for whatever shows we do. So, you know, going to the Adventure Bazaar, you know, sounds fun. But I don't know. I just think uh, you and Calliope would enjoy yourselves, and we could get this Bard College stuff done. While you guys were, you know, shopping with you your get, get, him, get him his brochures and yeah, exactly. pay his admission. Yeah, and I feel like if he goes there by himself, you know, the, the smooth-talking bards might talk him into something he doesn't want to do. So I'll be there to help out just in case, uh, you I, know, some diplomacy is needed. Okay, I mean, if, if that's what you want to do, I mean, I'm not going to I'm not gonna stop you. All right, cool, yeah, great. I've, I've never been to the full bazaar, but I got everything I needed at their stand, so it's fine. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Just picking up what you're putting down. I know. I know. 
I, I, I set this shit up. I put that domino set there. <laughs> I look over at Calliope. Is that okay with you? She doesn't mind as long as she gets to go around and just see all kinds of uh, random wacky things. She uh, she did say uh, Calliope's gonna look to you, although there is one place I would actually like to walk around. Uh, just outside, I remember there was a really big building with a lot of like, um, there's a lot of shouting and a lot of like really like strong looking men and women coming out of them. I'm guessing that's the gladiatorial pit. Uh, just outside there, there's a tavern, Shipwreck, that I remember that I want to go there. There's a lot of, like, really nice places to eat over there, and it's a nice little, uh, nice little, uh, ridge that l overlooks the entire side port. Well, that sounds great. Yeah. We could do that afterwards if you want. So sounds good to me. I mean, I know we have to meet there later, so. Yeah. Could, it, could get there early. I was gonna say, if you guys get there ahead of us, we can meet you there. It'll be fun. Yeah, it'll be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. <clears throat> All right, so... Uh, let's see. So that leaves Onslow, who you just see just walk off the ship, look left and right. He is the most sore thumb looking creature in this entire place. He's amongst, just happy to have his legs back. Amongst all the humans, like genie folk and elves and cat people, there's a giant, like, eight foot tall fat gator boy just <laughs> meandering about. Wizard. Yeah, with a giant fucking blunderbuss on his side, just like, y'all want to start a fight? <laughs> Who wants to go hunting? <laughs> oh no, that's his deal. He's yeah. gonna. He tells you that he's looking for the nearest hunting lawn, uh, lodge. Uh, I tell him that I heard that there was one up there. Um, uh, don't mistake it for. Uh, <laughs> don't mis uh, Let's see. It's. Uh, oh man, Kamal's Camel's Hump Hunting Lodge. Yes. Uh, don't confuse it for Sage's Keep Zoo. Uh, <laughs> if, if, Very if different. They are in cages, not there. <laughs> Oh, well, that wouldn't be sport in any way. Yeah, that wouldn't be real sport. I mean, to be fair, you could go to the zoo to get inspiration for what you might want to hunt later. But yeah, please don't use your blunderbuss in there. Uh, you you are listed as a member of our crew, I believe. So if something happens to you, it's going to come back on the rest of us. <laughs> don't worry, son. Whatever I find and kill will be legal like. Excellent. To the best of my ability. That's uh, all we that's, can ask. Mm, all right. <laughs> he said that just to get that <laughs> rop out of you. He's just like he's got, he's got that little gator smirk. <laughs> yep. Just uh, you know, trying to learn to be a responsible captain, and that means taking responsibility for the rest of my crew's actions. So you know, just uh, take care of yourself. Responsibility, huh? As Grammy's standing there right next to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you gonna be responsible for all the things I buy for my secret ingredients? <sighs> Here's five hundred gold, Grammy. Go pick it up. There you go. <laughs> Our good friend Sheldon <laughs> has uh, just donated to the uh, food fund. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> and you want to know what the best part is? Because of her, like, genetic makeup, and she's, like, light blue and, like, just hunched over <laughs> and everything, there's a bunch of Genasi who don't, like, just bat an eye at her because she kind of almost looks like them. She's just ancient looking. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how, how closely is the skin of, uh, is, is the color of her blue to Wake's typical blue? She's, like, a sickly pale blue. It's, like, okay. well, it's, like, like a more deep... it's like sea foam, but way more tinted blue. Yeah, my blue is very much like that uh, D6 right there, if you hold mm. it up. I think it's behind Roy. <laughs> At least on the parts of me that aren't, like, white, like my yeah. underbelly. Oh, well. Since I'm all shark-like and all. Kind of a royally blue. Yeah. Alrighty, so that was that. Uh, I figured we could lighten him, lighten him up some with some powder, p try and pass him off as Genasi. Ooh. Well, I'm, a I'm already a human. What are you talking about? <laughs> For well, what are you talking future, about, fellow mammals? For we, future ports. We, we was talking about a different friend. He's yeah. dead now. Don't worry uh, about it. Okay. Yeah, he didn't come with us. <laughs> for various reasons. <laughs> oh, my Christ. Uh, Skrung uh, tells you that his day is going to be spent heading over to the hearth of Salima. Hmm. He's getting a spa treatment. All right. You know when you're done idea. with that, you want to try to help us find our little shadow friends in the... Uh, what do you think I'm doing right after this? Ah, fair enough. Well, have a good day. I'm going spot. to the brothel. And he goes off. <laughs> oh, well, he's having a day. Hey, you know what? You know, if they, you know, if, if they would operate anywhere, it's either a bank or a brothel. Yeah, I... the places where men are most likely to spill their secrets, absolutely. Yeah. 
Next is who? Okay, so I said everyone except for them. We're gonna be uh, mucking about. Do 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 do. Ziaka, you don't know where Ziaka went. Oh, no one was no one was paying attention to Ziaka the whole time. Kind of odd, uh, you know, not the keeping, massive snake. Yeah, the, the the massive uh, Indian black cobra woman kind of just meandering around. No one seen a she giant has, snake. She has a direct uh, thing that she has, like that she's interested in, though. Yeah, and that's kind of frightening, don't you think? A little, but <laughs> hey, well, I think we'll catch up with her. <laughs> if something happens, I think we'll hear about it. Okay. All right. Uh, Wake is more. Uh, actually, not. I'll roll to see if I consider that <laughs> with his current yeah. obligations. No. Nah. No. He's. He's more focused on the fact that he's hanging out with Calliope, and that makes him all fluttered. Cool. All right, so let's see. <laughs> all charisma checks roll disadvantage. <laughs> all right, so you two want to go walk off to the Bard that. College. You want to head over to the bazaar? Yes. Uh, let's go with you first, and wouldn't you know it, Grammy's meandering with you. <laughs> <laughs> this is not the NPC. Perfect. Tackle on it, I expected, but perfect. <laughs> Don't worry, Grammy, best wig man. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, your possible wife. <laughs> 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 there was a ceremony. We aren't entirely sure what it means. But I do. <laughs> of course she does. We're best. Like, she's bound to our ship. <laughs> to us. All right, let me take Eternally. a look. Eternally. Let me she's look at this real quick. Culinary. So basically, this whole entire like marketplace, think a more coastal Agrabah. Okay. Uh, there's a bunch so of Morocco. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a it's a coastal Morocco. Yeah, gotcha. there you go. Uh, you head on. Uh, you're pretty much just walking through streets. You got a bunch of people like everyone's going off on their own business. You have a bunch of like human and Azamar tourists. So a bunch of the folks who are around here like dress very fancy and noble. No one here looks poor. Everyone here looks like they're middle to extremely high class. You are the biggest sore thumbs in this entire place. I am dressed a little raggedy. <clears throat> Calliope doesn't seem to care one iota of this. She knows where she comes from because that's the whole point of her coming here and speaking to the calls about their plight. Yeah. So she's A-OK -okay with everyone staring at her. And of course she's a fawn, so there's no getting around that. So you said you haven't been here for eight years. Yeah, she's like, every like stall you stop by, she's like stopping the urge to like beckon the call of like someone just going like, hey, fresh fish, or hey, we got gemstones, or we got like a bunch of these are Tabaxi and Genasi like peddlers trying to like give you all kinds of random wacky bullshit. Right. Yeah, she, she turns to you and goes, yeah, I haven't been here in so long. Everything's all new and different. It's like I never been here at all. It's kind of amazing, this whole entire experience. It, it's very refreshing after being stuck on an island with almost certain death for a couple of years. Yeah, I imagine. Uh, I spent a lot of time out at sea alone, and my first time around people was just weird in general. Well, they didn't find you strange, did they? I mean, your kind are make up most of this. Us, the land creatures, are probably more odd to you than you are to us. Well, I, I mean, I guess. I mean, the I usually dress like this when I'm among the humans, though. They make me, I don't know, nervous sometimes. Like, the humans that this raise This man me. looks somewhat garish. Oh. <laughs> As one human kind of just, like, looks at you. I'm I subscribe to the New Yorker. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Is my makeup job that bad? I ask her. I'm gonna roll for Calliope for that question. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Honesty. Okay, I'm not going to lie. You look kind of strange, but not enough that it's going to bat people's eyes like too much. Okay, you're already you're already not. You know, we don't. Neither of us look the part of being very garish, as that man put it. Yeah. Well. He's just lucky I'm here on a peaceful mission, I guess. I don't know. I'm Must everything be conflict with you? I kind it's of seen that. You seem a little angry a lot. <sighs> I have a lot I have a lot of pent-up issues that I 
am trying to deal with. Well, like what? Uh, I lost two families. One was ripped away from me as a baby, and the other one was ripped away from me as a young adult. I see. I guess I just kind of lived in a world of conflict, and it's... Every time I think about them, I get angry. And... Well, you have your friends now with this new ship. Is that not something to keep in mind? It is, and... Every... I have nightmares about losing them, too. And it just makes me angry. It makes me want to fight harder and stronger. And it's why I practice so hard on my meditations. It keeps me focused so that I don't lose my edge. I mean, it's why I teach Nedra. It reminds you of something that you kept as a normal common day occurrence. Yeah. I don't know what I'd be without this conflict is the problem. I don't know what that would make me. It's so part of who I am that I don't know how to... Yeah. Well, on the upside, it could be just as interesting as... I know this is going to sound morbid, but all this conflict, maybe perhaps a new adventure is in just being able to be calm and find things that are more mundane to be more interesting. What would that be for you if you could think of anything? Honestly, just the only times of normalcy where I feel like I'm not in conflict is, well, either when I'm teaching Nedra, like passing on knowledge that I have, or right now, I guess. I see. She, uh, she looks to one of the uh, peddlers. I'm going to roll a quick uh, perception check for her. Okay, well, she heads over towards one of the stalls. It's uh, a tabaxi woman speaking, <clears throat> excuse me, a tabaxi woman speaking to her. They begin to mince words. By looking at this stall, it's a place that looks like it's stained glass, like really, really well, high quality painted glass. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the first thing, she starts like pointing to a bunch of objects. She finally comes back to you after a few minutes and she hands you a small uh, effigy of a fawn in, made of glass. Is this a gift? Of course it is. I bought one for myself too. So it's a small little way that this could be remembered. And since you seem to thrive in conflict, I figured it might be cute if we both got glass figures of each other or in some way that represents us and we just make sure it never breaks. Is hers just like a fish or something? Or yep, it's a shark, and he, she, uh, she gives you a deer. She gives, uh, she gives you a deer, and she holds on to a shark. I crack a smile. Thank you, Calliope. That's. I will treasure this. She like kind of like lightly tips the end of the shark at the end of the deer. She, she 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 giggles at the fact that you flinched at that. Yeah, I let I like a little bit of steam flies out of the back of my neck. <laughs> <laughs> out of your gills. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Cover him. Oh, I I say this this same. It's warm. The same guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do kind of notice that you are in like a desertish area. This this whole landmass. Yeah, and I'm is... wearing more layers than I should. Be. Yeah, and you're wearing fucking cover up and shit. So it's like. As you start to sweat, like, some of your makeup's starting to, like, melt a little bit. Well, that's why I also wear a large hat to keep my head in the yep, shade. large hood. So, you make it to the bazaar. Like, again, this is just a... Like, everything's just, like, bustling and hustling all over the damn place. However, you are looking more for a specific one, which is JoJo's Adventurer Bazaar. Yes. That was the name of the one you're looking for. You find it. Uh, there you see a female tabaxi... Uh, she looks kind of oldish. She's, like, close to probably what looks like 40 for a human. <laughs> uh, standard calico-looking colors, uh, grown a little shaggy. Uh, she's spending, from what you're watching, is she's spending a lot of time, like, 
with all the new people who come in, and a lot of them are handing her, like, all these little things that look like they don't belong in the shop, but she's very interested in collecting new things. She's pawing and, like, just taking out a little spyglass and, like, alert and looking over objects that are all new and have no, like, cohesion with what she's actually selling. So she's very interested in gaining new stuff rather than selling new things. Uh, selling old old uh, inventory. Okay. You do see there are masks. Uh, there's a couple of uh, Plague Doctor masks that look like just someone came in and was like, here's a war item that I've had on hand and I'll buy, and she bought it <laughs> off them. One thing that I'm going to roll for that I'm specifically looking for are things that look like the best way I can describe them is like wrestling masks. One that's like blue that kind of covers the mouth, and one that's red and maybe looks dragonish. You're looking for a mask, like that costume looks like... mask. Basically. Yeah, a costume mask of a dragon. Uh, go ahead and roll investigation. investigation. No plague doctor mask, Doctor Pain. Yeah. <laughs> uh, fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah. Oh, uh, Sixteen. Sorry, it's intelligence. So there are some really, really fine-made masks here. They almost look like they're representations of various other races. Some are goblins, some are dragon folk, some are kobolds, some are humans, some are elves, some are dwarves. Like, they're really well-painted. Someone put a lot of love and effort into these. She notices that you're looking at them. She immediately, like, drops whatever she's doing and, like, kind of, like, just instant, like, pushes over to the side. She's, like, now in front of you, like... Ah, hello. I see you're looking for some uh, fun little cosmetics. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was thinking about taking my uh, disciple to the fight pit and wanted to dress up for the occasion. You're actually going to be in the fight pit and you want some pizzazz. Yes. Uh, I, I was thinking, do you have something that looks kind of like sharkish that maybe covers the mouth uh, for you me? Wa you watch as she turns to like contemplate to herself, but she strikes this pose. <laughs> Like the flex muscle man. <laughs> I, Very JoJo's posing. I see now. Um, shh, shh, shh. Okay. <clears throat> Contemplates. I got it. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> This is, <laughs> no, no, I'm not doing that. Okay. Okay, so uh, she. This mask is made of stone. <laughs> Don't bleed on it. Damn it, Grant, you took my bit away. <laughs> she was going to hand you a stone mask. Oh, man. <laughs> she, uh, yeah, so you're looking right. for uh, a shark or a dragonish thing. She actually does come back. If you're looking for something more sharkish, uh, sharkish, she comes back with what looks like the depiction of a great white coming at you straight forward, but the jaw doesn't go around where the chin is. It actually, like, loops down and goes under the neck. Hmm. I and need something that would cover my mouth. Oh, you want something that covers your mouth? Yeah. Okay, well, she can give you what looks like... Uh, it actually looks like plate mail that kind of, like, covers the front of the face, hmm. and it looks like the nose tip of a shark... And then the jaw is actually like the mouthpiece that covers it. Will this be allowed to be worn in the arena? Of course. Ah, all right. How much for this? She once again, when you give her the ask, when she when you ask her how much is it? These are thinking poses. For you? <laughs> for me specifically. For you specifically, because. I don't know, it's kind of strange. You almost remind me of some of the merfolk around here. You must be- I don't know what you're talking about. <clears throat> uh, I'm uh, distantly related on my father's side. I got some of the more- Sh Strike the Jojo, like, yeah, like, I don't know <laughs> what you're talking about. She like looks at you, menacing <laughs> begins to appear around her. I'm gonna roll insight on that. Roll deception. All right. His great grandmother had the finny fever. <laughs> <laughs> that one. <laughs> uh, distantly related. I sweat as more of it drips off. <laughs> oh, no, no, nothing fishy here. <laughs> Cue the fucking fight music from JoJo. <laughs> <laughs> to be continued. <laughs> no, not to be continued. 
hmm, rather strange that you, a merfolk, wishes to adorn yourself as such. <clears throat> yeah, uh, I just, I just wanted to look a little d different, you know, like pizzazz up the fight ring a little. Well, pizzazz is what we're here and all about. I needed something for my disciple, something that looks like a red dragon. Oh, it's not for you, is well, it? Well, no, this, the first one's for me. The second one is for her. A red dragon. Well, we have plenty of those. However, look around you, dear. We are kind of in a very rich environment. I can give you what you want, but it's going to be dashing. Well, I Same in price. Hmm. She I comes back. Uh, she gives you your helm. Like she'll she'll see that to that. She kind of like is happy about the fact that she broke you, so she's not too concerned about pricing with that one for now. Yay! But she does go back and get you <laughs> what looks like she comes back with uh, a cowl that is in the shape of a dragon, but then the back end of it actually like spreads out into wings that go across the shoulder. And That's this thing is cool. adorned with rubies. All right. And gold. Seems unnecessary, but okay. <laughs> this one might you be. Asked, no, you I, asked, no, you asked for show. She's giving you show. And the best part about it is that when you activate it, she presses a little button underneath. Smog comes out where the nostrils are for the dragon. Oh. I, mean, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> This will cost you 1100 1100 gold? Yes, dear. What else would I ask for? That, that's fair. You know, hold on. Let me see how much I got left. And on top of that, with the mask that you want, since it doesn't have any special, like, little, like, showmanship to it, un unless you want something like that. No. Something that, like, uh, Nedra's does, uh, yours will be, will be 800, so 29. 20. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, 19, 19, 19. 19. 19. Jesus right. Christ. <laughs> I was say, Jesus. Yeah. And there's a tenth. <laughs> a thousand this gold. is a finder's fee. Yeah, yeah. A thousand gold <laughs> combo fee. Yeah, convenience fee. We're run by Ticketmaster, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> convenience fee. For you getting to come all the way to us, you get to pay us an additional. Yeah, this is a pickup fee. Um, fee, 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 uh, 1900 <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. I show her all of these gemstones that I have. Uh, the oh, two malachites, blue quartz, oh. uh, obsidian... Uh, I think we have two pieces of obsidian, one turquoise, and a perfect ruby. So, cue a Nunda panel from this girl. <laughs> she's just she's just been hit by the enemy stand, seeing all this fucking like <laughs> shit just before her. Precious stones. Ooh, she's very interested in these gemstones. Are you willing to make trade? If well, you're, if while you're money, willing to barter in this here bazaar. Oh, of course. While money is nice, I fancy a good trade. Absolutely. Well, I have all of these gemstones here before you, glittering, shining, and pure, found on our many adventures. As well, I pull out one of my mithril scimitars. Tink! Military-grade mithril. This is some high caliber military equipment. Yes. How did you come by this? Well, we happened to have, make friends with some people in the military on one of our adventures. We assisted them in a job and they rewarded us thusly. I, however, have no use for a sword. No, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> she is pretty fucking swayed by this story. So, what is your asking price for the sword, and how much do you wish to be ha uh, taken away? How, how are we doing this? Between but not, not all, throwing between all, this. all of these gems and this sword. Hmm. I'd be willing to call this an even trade. Uh, say off again what the items were that you're giving. A perfect ruby, uh, blue quartz, a malachite, 
uh, a piece of obsidian, two pieces of turquoise, and the mithril sword, scimitar. Roll persuasion with All advantage. Right. 16 or nat 20. She likes what you're selling. She'll do that even trade. <laughs> Between you and me, dear, most of the Asimar here are fans of jewels. I could pawn this off to them for triple the price. Well, then I guess you're coming out ahead. Just remember me next time I stop by. Well, is there anything else you would like? It seems your fond friend over there is quite interested in some very elegant dresses. Well, you see his geez. calliope's off the side, just like fishing through like really, really disgustingly rich looking robes. I go, I go over and I uh, see what, she, what she's about, like what she's looking at. She's just looking at very earthy colored looking clothing. Like it's, it's like a dress, but also like a very elegant like poncho. Like it has a little bit of utility to it, but something that's just not of like the common rag she was wearing for the longest time. She's looking to treat herself. You like but, these? Oh yes. Uh, you know, it's. I've always wondered what it's like to at least like own a piece of material from the calls themselves. This would be actually very nice. Well, I got a pretty good trade going on right now. I might be able to get you a good price on it. Oh, I don't wish to be a bother. I can purchase oh, no, on my it's, own. It's not. It's not a bother at all. I mean, I'm. I'm in the middle of trading right now, and I think, frankly, I'm getting. Uh, I'm giving her a bit of a bargain, so I think she might be. Pretty lenient on this one. And besides, you you got me such a nice gift. I feel... Well, if it's not too much trouble, I'd like this one. She shows you, like, a it, it's a dark green robe that uh, fl has a flowing back to it. And the cowl kind of, like, laces around the side into a lighter green. So it's, like, light green into dark green with... Uh, depictions of various uh, various animals off to the side, like kind of like leaning off the edge. That does look really nice. Apparently it's made from something called an alpaca? Alpaca. I, fe I, feel, I feel the material. You feel the material, your finger sinks into it, but it like barely makes a crease inside the inside it wearing this kind of feels like you're wearing like quadruple the amount of clothing you currently have on this feels really warm well if this is what you want i bet i can i bet we could get a really good price for it excuse me how much is this oh this this yeah. will probably cost you 600 how much if we add it to the current trade. Oh, you could just take it. Ah, well, there we Not go. Not so fast. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello again, sir. Yep, as this very regal Azamar There's man. Pause. Yeah, no, this this guy's got... He's a, a very tan man, kind of just like moseys on in. The and millionaire so it's, it's, Yep, Jojo, Island. just Jojo it up, like, oh. Uh, he's got... Four, he's got two sets of wings, one up by his shoulders and one is a little bit more towards his back. Uh, his hair is very short and slicked back and pure white, but it has tips of fire coming off it, and the fire is blue. He's got piercing, piercing silver eyes looking at you. Not so fast. My daughter would look absolutely astonishing in this. Well, that daughter. will be mine, thank you very much. Well, As he just daughter's... straight up takes it. He straight up takes it and looks over. This was 600, you said. Well, I will go ahead and buy, just tell you that I could absolutely take this and probably the whole entire rack for myself. Thank you very much. Well, I don't think that's going to be happening because your daughter isn't here right now and we got to this first. What are you talking about? She's right there. It's a little eight-year-old girl. Well, we got to this first, <laughs> so no. I attempt to... Oh, I'm sorry, but... What exactly class do you believe you are with those <laughs> atrocious footings and duds? Hmm. I believe a higher one than you, at the very least. Oh, really? Care to wager? Yes, really! Oh, yes. Well, care to wager that? How much will you pay for it? Outside of this 
<laughs> meager little trade of yours. Outside of this meager little trade of mine, I believe we were already in the middle of a deal. Oh, no. In fact, why don't I just go ahead and put this down here? Puts, uh... The, the cat lady is just sitting there, who, by the way, you never asked her name, so I'm just going to keep calling her the cat lady. <laughs> That's fine. fine. The cat lady I'm is just I'm just assuming sitting... she's JoJo. <laughs> yeah, no, the cat, the cat girl... The, the cat lady is just, like, sitting there just like, oh, God. Like, she's... This is common fucking bullshit coming from a lot of the tourists that come in, so everyone's got a bigger dick than everyone else from what it looks like from the nobleman. But she's not going to ignore the fact that the guy just put down a bar of platinum. Ooh. That's a fancy bar you got there. Mm, yes. This is just pennies to me. Mm. And you have, what, a few spare gems and... <laughs> oh, this is adorable. A cute little pitchfork made out of mithril. Oh, that's so blasé. It's a scimitar. I didn't realize your eyes were so bad. Maybe you should spend some of that platinum on some glasses. No, clearly, uh, you don't quite understand. The sword begins to melt. Well, I assume you're going to pay for that. <laughs> of course, that's what this is for. Let's see. Calliope's just looking at you like, it's not worth it. It's absolutely not worth it. We could absolutely find something else to buy. Meanwhile, the devil on your shoulder is like, you're going to let him get away with that? <laughs> Wake Are doesn't you? like getting talked down to. <laughs> Are you <laughs> kidding me? He's going to buy your dress, and then he's probably going to kiss your girl. Oh, my, oh my God. God. <laughs> she thought her first kiss would be from you, but it was from him. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> and there's not a muddy puddle around for her to wash her mouth out in. <laughs> you know, I'm curious. If you're this intent on getting it, you know, I don't think I can outbuy you. I probably don't <laughs> have enough Of course money. you couldn't. But how are you for a bit of sporting competition? What's this sport? I'm a gambling man. Oh, really? Well, well name your game. <laughs> how are you at betting at the fight pits? I wager I'm pretty good at those. Oh, you wish to compete, is that what you're saying? Oh, no, but I believe I have a contender. Really? Yeah. Very well. What's your buy-in, by the by? If you would buy, <laughs> which I'm sure you can't. Well, I have something more valuable than you could possibly imagine. Th I have a key that can open any door. Are you showing him the whole ring? No. No, I'm showing him the brass bar that we made many, many, many episodes ago. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Oh, you're okay. Roll me deception. Deception? I'm telling the fucking truth. Uh, sixteen. Brass. Yes, brass. A brass skeleton key that can open any door. No, I don't know. You just see the cat, the, the, the cat lady just like slam her hands on the table like, What? <laughs> yep. You had that? Obviously, it's worth more to me than everything I was willing to trade. Let's just say it might cost somebody a bit more than gold can buy. He like takes the, he takes the key away from you. I allow him to examine it. He doesn't seem like the type that's just going to steal it. No. Nor does he seem like the type that can outrun me if he does. <laughs> but he does seem like the type who just melted your mithril sword for shits and giggles. <laughs> it's, a ma it's a magic item. I assume it's going to be slightly difficult to melt. Yeah, by the by, when you like get near this man, you feel that sense of heat wave off him. Like, yeah, I'm probably sweating a bit more now. Yeah, a little bit more. Like, if you just notice that like just going near an Azimar, it's like they exude this amount of heat that just like comes out of nowhere. It's bizarre it's strange that like even even from the tips of their hair like they don't radiate it from the top of their head they don't radiate from their wings it's just this aura of heat that just follows them no matter where they go very well 
for your meager dress and your <laughs> adorable little masks, I'll wager you for this key. No, oh, I'm sorry, the masks aren't for sale. The masks are for my champion. Roll me persuasion one more time. 16 again. This dice ain't He'll bad. concede to that. Okay. He'll concede. You will have your masks. Very well. Allow me one moment. He like snaps his fingers to the cat woman. Parchment right this moment, please. She just rolls her eyes, goes to the back and grabs a little piece of parchment. They he writes down the terms and conditions of this little bout of yours, and he hands you one piece of paper with his signature. How will you sign your signature on his on his piece? Why, my name, of course, Sheldon Flash. As is stated on my ID on my ID badge. Very well. Now, let us proceed. He holds his hand out and puts it on the table as if expecting you to do it as well. I hold my hand out. The cat woman takes out a dagger. Oh, God. <laughs> One of these for real. Another Azamar bet, poor sucker. Yep, just be, she begins to carve a mark that looks like the front side, it, lo it, it looks like what appears to be the front side of some kind of beast with tusks. It, she's carving it into your flesh very easily. Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> oh no, you don't feel it. Oh, good. Because this knife actually looks like it's made out of the bone of an animal and it's giving off that same heat. Roll perception check real quick. Uh, 13. 13? A bunch of other Azamar are kind of carrying around this same weapon. Like, even he, the guy you're in a bout with, is putting, has uh, this dagger on the side of him. Is yours just not good enough for this, or? <laughs> I would never have it touch commoner's blood. Well, my blood is anything but common. She carves into it uh, a little symbol of what looks like an elephant charging forward. And he does the same thing to his hand. Now you can tell the... Now... He, and you look at his name. I apologize. The name of this man. Let me go ahead and get the paper. Ah, here we go. The name of this man is Edward Caster. Edward Caster. Asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Professional asshole. <laughs> For hire. And even if I do lose this bet, oh well. It's not like you'll ever amount to the same amount of money I make as a lawyer. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm oh. going to save this ski slope for all of the kids in Party Bird. <laughs> <laughs> Ed Caster Esquire is here to ruin the fun time, kids. <laughs> just, uh, the, even the little girls are sitting there just like, she she doesn't give it. She's just looking around at all the other stuff, like the... The woman, the woman behind the counter has been trying to, like, entertain the little girl. And even Calliope's joining in and, like, just trying to make friends with the little kid. <laughs> yeah. Right now, this is just a pissing contest between you and Edward right now. Right. Well. Antonio, stop, stop talking with the commoners. <laughs> On the way out, I offer the little girl my three fey glass marbles. Here. You like toys, <laughs> little girl? She doesn't talk. She only has one wing spouted out the middle of her back. That's a cute little wing you got there. Here, these are made of fey glass. If you break them, they reform over time. She like looks at you like, "Are you sure?" At least I'm ninety percent. She doesn't say that. She's yeah. she she's not talking to you. She like looks up at you like very curiously. Like, I was like, "So feel free to play as rough as you like with them." She like puts it down. She like gingerly tries to like kick it with her foot, like. Mm. It's not really doing anything, but you hear like a small little crack. She like bounces back like, oh no, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. It reforms. She like picks it up and like is hugging it, just like, this is cool. So you made a small little friend here today while Edward over there is just like, oh, 
No, well, it's my job to make his life miserable from this point out, but I want to make his daughter happy. <laughs> oh, no, the kid's super enthused with that. And Calliope looks at you like actually very surprised that you're making peace with the kid rather than constantly just getting yourself into conflict. Like, ah. Oh. I, look, I look at her like, it's not her fault. Nice to see that you're not at least bringing conflict onto others. That no, was what I was more worried about. That's never my, That's never what I do, or at least not what I try to do. Oh, really, Smash Cut? <laughs> <laughs> Punches through the paper. <laughs> All right, so you now have a small contract that your fighter versus Edward's fighter in the gladiatorial pits. I'm guessing that's later on this evening. <laughs> yes. Well, no, not this, not this evening. He's still actually awaiting you to give a time and a day. Since you guys are going to be here for quite some time, I'm going to say, like, no longer than a week. Can you possibly, like, hold this off till? I'm going to say tomorrow at high noon. All right, well. I like drama. <laughs> all right. Tomorrow at noon, <laughs> you have a, you, your fighter versus his fighter. It'll give him time to put a bet on someone. It'll, yeah, it'll give him time to find somebody that <laughs> might be able to fight Nedra. Meanwhile, at the Bar College, tomorrow at noon for your recital, Eloy. <laughs> yes, everyone <laughs> will be there. <laughs> Yeah, now we're going to switch over to you guys. <laughs> I can't wait for him to try to buy Nedra in the fight. <laughs> it's like, great, now I have to fight Nedra again. <laughs> yeah. I found a very strong woman on a boat nearby. She, she was, was just scribbling on paper. <laughs> begging to go to the fight pit. <laughs> Let's see. She paid me to bring her. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd she get all the money? From this ship off to the side. Everything on it. From this rinky-dink little boat. <laughs> That spoke to me. <laughs> she gave me the whole boat. <laughs> All right. I agreed to it. As Yildin said. <laughs> go for it. I just go where the money is. <laughs> uh, let's see. Meanwhile, now you guys. Uh, meanwhile, on the way to the Bard College. Yep, on the way to the Bard College. Where the number 11 is, that's where you guys are. Got it. Okay. Boop. You are currently passing by what seems to be a very, uh, very ritzy, gardenish looking area. There's a bunch of people, like, just drinking tea, eat, like, reading books, and there's a lot of musical instruments about. A couple of folks with drums, a couple of folks with horns. Uh, there's a guy with a didgeridoo and a parrot on his shoulder <laughs> as they're just, he's blowing into it, and the parrot's actually singing the melody while the guy's blowing into the horn. Oh, some guys have all the luck. A singing parrot, ridiculous. Yeah, no, the parrot's like singing like a person. Like it's <laughs> it's it's belting out a recital of anything. Oh my god, that's amazing! The parrot looks at you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're very welcome. This is way better than that other bird we met. Oh, absolutely. So. uh... You're pretty much at the front of the Bard College. Do you want to go inside, or do you want to like meander about and talk to any of the other people around here? Uh. I, I look around and see if there are any, like, if there are anyone just kind of like sitting around, not looking like they're like busy with something. So if I interrupt them or try to start a conversation, it won't be problematic. Uh, for most of the people here are, they look like they're students. Everyone's dressed like, again, we're in a really rich neighborhood, so yeah. everything's kind of like looks really fancy. But a lot of these people seem a little bit more free spirited and a lot more uh, willing to experiment with a bunch of other different clothing. There's a uh, Mostly, again, uh, the humans, the elves, and the Genasi, and the Azamar are mostly the people that look like that seem to be alumni here. Okay. Uh, they're actually, and apart from everyone else who's using instruments, there actually is a fellow who's looking at this really weird mechanism. It looks like a small little, like, miniature obelisk that is constantly turning Almost like how it looks like the inside of a music box, and he's operating it by pushing the magic, like, magically pushing it to, like, turn ever so slightly. It makes, like, a clock ticking noise until it stops, and then he starts, begins, he begins to, like, write a really long-winded sentences as it's turning. Hmm. Uh, this fellow is an elf gentleman. Uh, he, from your perspective, I need you to roll me a uh, knowledge check. Uh, 17. 17? Yes. Uh, he's a high elf. Okay. 
Uh, that means that he is a very high noble blood. He is someone who is so, like, like his bloodline completely, like, touches fey magic. This man is the cut above the rest when it comes to your race. All right. Uh, I approach him very humbly, but, like, trying to basically be like, excuse, excuse me, sir. Pardon me. Uh, but, but one second, one second. This is very important, actually. By all means. He magically, like, you see, like, magic kind of, like, ebb the little clock-like device again. And the device starts to hum and give off a red glow. Ah, I see. Okay, I apologize. Now, uh, what is your question? Um, hi there, sir. Uh, my friend and I were interested in uh, applying to this Bard College and learning more about it. Uh, who would we speak to to, you know, kind of get, I don't know, maybe a tour or some brochures or something? Just some ideas of, you know, what we can do here. Oh, a tour. Well, I myself am not actually a professor here. That would be inside. There is a gentleman by the name of Isaac Thorne that you should speak to. Isaac Thorne. Thank that you That should very bring much, bells sir. to you. Yep. Yes. There's a human in here by the name of Isaac Thorne. Uh, he's a ve he's very well known around here. He's actually, <laughs> surprisingly, he's actually the school's mascot as well as part of it, the alumni. Oh. That's very interesting. And speaking of interesting, what is uh, what's this contraption here? Oh, this. <laughs> it's funny. The Tabaxi here told me that it's a device that reads time. But that's preposterous, because if it was a device, the entire alumni, the, the, even the whole army would be here taking this away and confiscating the entire place. You do know that machinery is forbidden, of course. Oh, ab absolutely. Uh, wow. But it, but it doesn't act, with, it's strange. It resonates with whatever magic you seem to place into it. It hmm. clicks off and then gives you a message based on where the symbols on this are interlocked. He does it again, like he says, okay, he like pulls out his hand, he has like a little bit of ice at the tip of his finger. He touches the device. It starts to click again, like in various different ways. Like there are like three layers to this thing. And like the third layer moves over two. One, the middle layer turns over once and the top layer doesn't move at all. And then the device itself begins to, uh, amplify a little bit of coldness to it. And then he starts writing down again, like almost it's giving him some kind of like invisible message that only he can understand. Hmm. So That's kind of like, that so you're putting magic in and it's shifting these pieces to alert you to how much time has passed while the magic is in it? Yes. Interesting. Eloy, you're more magical than I am. Uh, sorry, uh, forgive me. I didn't introduce myself, Mr. High Elf. My name is Ezra Lockwood. This is my good friend, Eloy. Uh, what's your name? We are all given pen names here at the college. Oh. I am i don't mean to offend, but I'd rather you call me by that. I am... Of course. The Clash. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. The Clash. This is a... Ah, yes. An, an it's very good that you... already. It's... It's already grand that you were very proper in calling me by the full name. Of course. If you ask to be called The Clash, you will be called The Clash, sir. <laughs> Gracious. And your name? My name is Ezra Lockwood. This is my friend Eloy. He is the one who's more interested in actually applying here. I'm sort of his manager slash, uh, you know, just buddy here to make sure everything goes smoothly. Oh, you have no fear of the college. They mean no ill will whatsoever. Oh, that's cool. fantastic to hear. What exactly do you wish to improve yourself upon? Well, I mean, all around, really. But, but you know, I never knowed before, just, just a few days ago, that you can write down magic, and then or music, rather, and, 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 then, and then read it later. Oh. Boy, boy, I'd like to learn how to, read, how to read music. In fact, they gave me, this, they gave me some of this, these markings here. <laughs> I don't know what they mean, but they tell me if I learn to read it good, I could learn music from it. Well, then you'll actually need one of these devices then. It comes for every person who joins the college. Mm. Well, that's great. This, this obelisk, this, this dealy will help me learn how to read magic? Yes. Well, well great. Of course, you'll have to pay the tuition tolls, of course, once entering the college, and you'll have to stay here for some time to be studious. 
I mean, I can work real hard, but I, how much time does it take? I've been at this college for three years now. Is there any sort of, uh, like, study abroad program? Like a sort of, you know, taking your learning on the road kind of a, kind of an idea? Well, that would mean you'd have to have the traveler's permit to visit all the other colleges in the entire, in the entire country. Ooh, that sounds like something we could do. Yeah. That'd be, that'd introduce all kinds of learning perspectives. A, a great academic smorgasbord of ideas all across the world. That is what you are describing is exactly what I've always wanted my whole life. Hmm. It's going to be very difficult, though. You will have to prove yourself as your perf natural performance to the rest of the alumni. I'd is that something you believe that your talents can impress and sway? I mean, I'll try real hard. That's, that's the best I can do. My buddy Eloy here has more heart than almost any performer I've ever seen in my life. And I am trying to be a professional performer, so I've seen quite a few. Uh, I'm just curious, uh, for this performance, these, you know, this natural intuition that you're asking for, what exactly does that entail? Like, is there, does he just have to put on some kind of show, like, of his choice? Or is there some sort of rigorous performance obstacle course that he has to go through? <laughs> well, the quickest way would be to, to defeat the headmaster in a, in a duel of music. Ooh. <laughs> a regular devil went down to Georgia. I, All right. I've played music with people before. Boy, I never even thought about Playing it against them, how does that even work? We bring a crowd here. Whoever feels is more adequate in their music to sway them wins the fight. By a round of applause, how do they feel? Oh, nope, you use, nope, you use your magic on the audience in some way to make them feel something. So you're pretty much casting your magic out into the audience, <laughs> and depending on the engagement or how that is performed, and if they think it's cool enough, boy howdy, you beat them. Boy. I mean, that's all I've ever wanted to do. So, I mean, winner, I can't lose. Win or lose, I, I get to play my music and try and make people happy. Absolutely. And you see, it's that kind of heart that he's going to put into every performance, which is why I, am, I have the utmost confidence that he will succeed in this very challenge. <laughs> Well, even if you don't win, there is still the prize for attempting. <laughs> now, you say you have, you wish to learn how to write scripture for music. Read it, write it, all of it. That is something only alumni are able to actually do. Now, tell me, how confident are you are you in defeating someone in a musical battle? Jeez, I I never even tried before. I wouldn't even know how to start, but I'm 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 real eager to learn. The, I've, the clash. Let me just regale you of some of the <laughs> the adventures that my good friend Eloy has had with his magic. It was with his skill, with his encouraging words alone, that he had managed to turn failures into victories for our for our just band of privateers. His cutting words, if he turns against you, he has driven giant creatures, both insane and to their own demise, through their own internal defeats. His uh, skills are unparalleled. A man of satire, then. Uh, I mean, I suppose I did do that. I, I wouldn't want to do that to nobody nice that wasn't trying to kill me, though. Of course. But, yeah, I mean, there was that, there was that tree ant. <laughs> I, I made him real sore. He talked a tree ant into defeat. Do you understand what kind of feat that is? I, I did make that Wendigo go real bibbledy, and that was fun. <laughs> a Wendigo? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's where we come from, Venom Island. They was all deers and, and beans. It was real weird, but turns out it was a Wendigo behind it all, and I turned my music into pretty lights that he stared at until we exploded him. It was an exciting adventure to be sure. Welcome to Dungeons and Dragons, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. So you know what? When, when you put it that way, I mean, if I don't seem very confident, Mister the Clash, it's just because I never, I'm self-taught, and I never know nobody else who could do what I can do. So I, I honestly don't know how I measure up. You call him not very confident. I call him humble. 
He realizes his power. He just does not understand how much it dwarfs everyone around him. The cla- I've gone into full salesman mode, <laughs> yeah. by the way. The, the Clash agrees with a story like that. <laughs> See, I suppose I should break it down a little bit more. You're telling a story to an audience and using your magic to amplify it. Your story versus the alumni story. I just kind of nudge Eloy. This guy's been stuck in a stuffy school probably for the last 10 years. You're going to have great adventure stories compared to that. I mean, that's kind of what I've been, I've been trying to keep it a secret, but that's kind of what I've been working on for the talent show is, is using my magic to make pictures in the air so that people can see something while they're listening to that's it. That's fantastic. Talking pictures. No one's ever thought of such a thing before. <laughs> Talking pitches. We'll call them the talkies. <laughs> the pitches. All right. Well, he the clash pretty much tells you to go find Th- uh, Isaac Thorne. Uh, he can at least help you set up such an such an event. Okay. And uh, if you pay a nominal fee, he can at least get you a small like version of the little device. Okay. Uh, that uh, that the clash was using. Well, thank you very much, The Clash. You have been a, an enormous help, uh, and I understand you're a very busy man, so uh, I just want to thank you very sincerely for helping my colleague and I here uh, out with all this. Yep. All right. <laughs> the cla- yep. Yep. The Clash returns to his uh, rigorous studies as he's playing with his little clock device and writing down more words. <laughs> all right. With that, I guess we, uh, we head inside, assuming that's where he told us we could find Isaac Thorne. Yep. If you gave us any idea of where that is. All right. Uh, well, I guess I assume we head in there. Yeah, you, that's you, where I was. Yeah, no, you head, ins- you head inside. I, guess I can't speak for Eloy. <laughs> no, no, no. You head inside. No, you can pretty much speak for Eloy. I think I think everybody knows where Eloy is making a beeline to. <laughs> <laughs> so you're pretty much in a giant place where there's just like people of all sorts of shapes and sizes. There are like people dressed up in clown outfits, reciting things, talking to a skull. <laughs> There's one dude off to the side, like, actually fiddling with the an object floating in the air, dropping, and then returning back, almost as if time was in a loop for it. And he's starting to, like, he's actually, like, speaking to it. Like, his words is what's enacting all of this. There's someone who's mending a statue that's broken to shape itself into various forms, by literally just playing on a small little horn. This place is like Wonderland music land for you. Oh my gosh, Eloy, I hadn't even considered this. This is a perfect ground to scout talent. If we're going to every college around, these people will be out of here with a degree and looking for work. And that's when we come in with the Lockwood (laughs) Natural Wonders. Boy, we could have a whole band. Oh my God, Eloy, you are... Genius! I Thank would, you so much. I wouldn't have to play like eight different instruments all by myself. You could just play one, and we could have seven other people play the other seven. Oh instruments. my god! He's walking around with a fucking band of people while you're fighting dragons. <laughs> <laughs> Brave Sir Robin. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so uh, you go up to the reception lady and tell her that you want to speak to a man named Isaac Thorne. She agrees to this. Uh, a this man has like a dark brown bowl cut. Uh, he's got a small little stubble that kind of like leans out. Uh, he's adorned in uh, silver earrings and chains on both ears. His lobes actually hang down. He's got giant holes in the side. Uh, he's wearing a silver robe uh, with a red sash going across it as he approaches you with like a small piece of paper. And he's, like, writing stuff down and hands it off to the receptionist. I hear that you were looking for me. Eloy, this man looks familiar. Roll insight. Uh, That would be 11. The man strangely gives you a vibe like you've seen him before. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Mr. Thorne? Yes, that is me. Hi, I'm, I'm Eloy. Have we... I've only been like two places since I left home. I do not know where I'm getting this. Have we met before? No, I've never met you before. I've, 
I know of your kind. I've never seen a centaur come this far out to the ocean. I'm going to roll insight on him saying, no, we've never met before. All right, go <laughs> for it. I just want to be sure that even he believes what he's saying. <laughs> uh, 13. No, it's, he seems, seems pretty dark. legit in this. He, he, he knows of what centaurs are. He's just never seen one come out this far before. And I do say you actually seem a little shorter than what I've read. I, do, I mean no disrespect to it, but you seem like someone who is a little worldly at this point. Do you know of anything of the Witness Tower? Uh, yeah, yeah, that was, that yeah, was the we, big... We'd been there. Yeah. We solved its riddle. You solved its riddle. <laughs> I forget that I'm just saying this, like, matter-of-factly. <laughs> magic obelisk thing that everyone was confused about. Yeah, we, uh, we, we visited. Uh, it, it was a whole, it was a team effort. But uh, we eventually made our way through it and uh, encountered a gentleman at the top. It was quite interesting. What did this gentleman look like? Oh, you know, big, kind of... Scary. I don't know. Uh, uh, horns. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't get up to the top myself. That was somebody else on our crew. So I just heard about it after the fact. I was kind of like peering from way down here, but I. I think it was a minotaur. Wasn't yeah. it? it? Sounded exciting. This man's taken aback by this. <laughs> you would be a rather interesting fellow. No, I take it back. You are an interesting fellow. Something I've been looking for for the longest time. Most of these folks here are just all posh and in their own ways. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> laughing to myself, not quite saying anything, just excited at <laughs> how everything seems to be coming together. And, yep. And Eloy's just standing there with a big dopey grin. <laughs> Pretty much nobody but Ezra has been this interested in him <laughs> at first meeting. <laughs> so what can I do for you, gentlemen? Well, we was we was told I'm real interested in learning how to how to read and write magic or uh, music rather. I mean, I guess it's sort of the same thing, isn't it? It seemed pretty closely related in, uh, in here. I, I hear this is the place to come, but but here's the other thing: is that we got we got a whole crew together. We're, we we want to travel around and and put on our show for folks and make them happy. So I, I hear tell you can get a traveler's permit, so you can travel all around and learn on the go. But it's real hard. Ah, oh, yes. The Traveler's Permit is actually a very fine way for you to experience what all the other colleges have to offer and to also test your talents in a more active environment. Ergo, fight the headmaster of each college. Musical gym leaders! <laughs> <laughs> as, the, as the students plainly call it, Battle of the Bands. <laughs> That all sounds fantastic. Just traveling around, learning new, learning new songs from new people. That's, that is all I want in this whole wide world. If you feel you have the aptitude for it, if you would wish to sign, it will be somewhat of a large fee. I will not lie. I apologize, but due to the nature of this entire, uh, and due to the nature of this program, we do have to send out messages of your we have to send messages of who you are, what your abilities are, how far you've gotten. The paperwork is rather large, especially for the Traveler's Program, but it does show your commitment, and it does help the college push forward with its studies. My mama always said I should be committed. <laughs> the entire experience... Are you ready for this, my friend? I've never been more ready for anything else in my life, sir. The entire program will at least cost you 100,000 gold. Oh! However, if you are in the traveler's permit, it will cost 2,500 for each college. Uh, 25, 25,000 for each college fight. Okay. So hold on, we need the the hundred thousand plus twenty five for no 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 no. It's one hundred thousand for the whole to actually be an alumni, but to do this uh, traveler's permit, it's it's twenty five thousand per to fight the headmaster. Okay. Hmm. I don't I don't think I have quite that much. Uh, I mean I I could probably throw a few thousand in there, but. Man, that's a lot of money. Say, <clears throat> can we talk about installment programs, work, <laughs> work study? Um, 
I do, I'll do you better. Student Fred. loans are a scam, Ezra. I don't want to do those. <laughs> oh. How does How does Ezra know about student loans? <laughs> <laughs> At Old Lady Big Rock Mountain University, he got scammed super hard. Oh yeah. Oh, However, well, <laughs> student well, loans are a scam, kids. This is Ben Creighton talking. <laughs> don't go into debt. <laughs> this is Chris Zito talking. I can concur. <laughs> Uh, however, I am willing to make a trade with some information. Your story is rather interesting. I've actually been doing a little bit of a case study for myself. Unfortunately, most of the people I've sent out were unsuccessful in solving this riddle. I would gladly put down the price on this fir on on the permit for this first pl uh, for your first fight in exchange for your story. He's got a Walt Disney as he wants to buy the rights to the tales. Which I don't think, uh, I was gonna go around and tell everybody my story for free. This sounds like a good deal. Ah, uh, but the, mm. I'd advise you did not do that. <laughs> I have benefactors who would find this interesting, uh, this information very interesting, so much so that I insist we don't speak about it out loud. See, my fear Psychically. here is, <laughs> my fear here is Eloy. If he, if he is using this as leverage for us, he, this may bar you from performing these songs, which is very bad. Ooh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like that. Yeah. Is there, I'm, I'm just, I would be curious to see a contract, sir, uh, just so we can understand the terms as far as selling his story. Oh, yes, by all means, one moment. He, he goes <laughs> off into the back. A couple of minutes later, he returns, and he comes with a, a bit of paperwork. Roll knowledge. Great. Uh, <laughs> five. <laughs> mm, yes, lots of big words here. Mm. Must be a mm, very insightful document. Most of the information here is just uh, basically like legalese for you're doing this because you want to be in the program. You've given the payment or at least something of a story or of equal value to the college that they could benefit from it in some way that allows you to be able to do this. Okay. So it seems like... Just, just, uh, well, you're not with him, but like, just like with uh, his story, is that trade is a lot more. Yeah, yeah. People suited are more here. interested in getting things than money. Yeah, here. people like things more than they do actual money because money is just thrown around willy nilly because of how high class everyone is. All right, so just so I'm clear here on this contract, Mr. Thorne, um, I, I just want to make sure I, I understand that you're saying that we shouldn't be, you know, just spouting these wild tales and everything. However, if Eloy says, perhaps, you know, creates his own original song to tell just one of his tales, not the whole story, obviously, but just, you know, excerpts, uh, will that come in conflict with this contract? He pulls you aside and whispers into your ear, in thieves can't, no. Understood, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, Eloy, I gotta be honest with you, reading through this contract, I think this seems fine. <laughs> You looked at one page. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> mm, yes, exactly what we needed. <laughs> Words. Yes, this is legal. Brilliant. Mm, I probably should have learned to read. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very fancy T he started that sentence with. I think we can trust him. He's on the up and up. <laughs> to mean, those it may concern. Well, I've seen everything I need to see. Well, as long as you keep this, as long as you can keep this entire story secret between you and him and his benefactor, and the only way you speak about this to anyone else is through song, he will drop the oh. if he will drop the price to 10 grand. 10 grand? I believe we can cover that. I could throw at least five or six grand your way if you need it. Okay, yeah. All right, that sounds like a good compromise, yeah. All right, <laughs> you, got, you got a deal. Very well, that sounds fantastic. After some paperwork, you begin to write down all this information. He hands you a small medallion that shows the picture of the Ibercal like flag, and he hands it to you. You have an Eber you have a uh, you have an Ibercal medallion. It is a Barge College medallion. It is your you are now in the Traveler's Program for the Bard Colleges of Las Aranas. Well, we have to win the Battle of the Bands to 
This at least gets you into it, okay, the fight. Okay, okay. So yeah, this, this is our the, the Battle of the Bands is basically your graduation ceremony. It's like, aha, so you've done this now. Here, we'll give you this, and you can move on. Yeah. Yes, pretty much. You're pretty much, you're now a traveling alumni, so it's pretty much like the, I went online and did a... <laughs> I bought my degree. Yeah. <laughs> you had a correspondence course. <laughs> now it's time to actually fucking use it. So you're an initiative of the college. Now... When your fight will be, and who it will be, that will be of a later date since we just literally got you into the entire... We got you into the college at the very start. But I can offer you scrolls, books, anything to your liking, especially if you talk to anyone here. I'm sure they have mounds of stories to tell you. Things that you can experience, things that you could use in your lyrics, in your prose, anything that you can craft and give to the college. Oh, that's right! Written word. He goes into the back and gives you one of the small little obelisks as well. Cast your magic onto this. When you feel you are ready to be inspired or to grant song, this will give you the power to actually write down your craft. Wow, it, it can just do that right away? Try a song. I'll play my spooky song. I like it. I'm scared. Roll. (laughs) (laughs) Chills. All right. Roll me. Let's see here. Roll me a arcana. A a arcana sleight of hand. And a a performance check. Oh, good. One thing I'm good at. (laughs) Arcana. 15. Okay. Sleight of hand. Uh, 12. All right. And performance, 29. Woo! So what was the spell you cast? Uh, Dissonant Whispers. Congratulations, you now have a scroll of Dissonant Whispers that anyone in the party can use. This thing grants you the ability to write any spell you know as a scroll for one day. Wow, damn. So like the scroll only lasts for a day? No, the scroll oh, is, oh, you can, you can use, use it. Once it. A day. Gotcha. No, no, the, the device itself. Yeah, the device yeah. can be used once a day to create a scroll. As gotcha. you as you play that song, the device begins to click and whir, and in your head, you find some weird untapped knowledge that you can just write this down. And we have plenty of days at sea, yeah. so we just stock up and machine gun <laughs> some of the script. This, this thing, like, clicks one final click, and you hear in the back of your head say, oh, it's very simple. This song that comes from the heart that brings fear into those that, are, that try to harm others around you, this is how it's formed, and this is why it's so scary. But to you, you're just watching as he grabs a pen and paper and just starts writing music. I'm just, like, watching this. And the music itself, like, the, the chords, are turning into easy, digestible words for me? Yeah, for you. No, it goes from writing the song, the song sheet, into words that you can easily transcribe. This is amazing. And at the end of it, like, after you finish, like, hearing this little bit of, like, framework in your mind, you have now just written down a small scroll of dissonant whispers. I got a question. <laughs> <laughs> I had this idea that this would be like learning to read my daddy's book, like regular words. This is way easier than that. <laughs> was was there a was there a magic machine all along that could have made it way easier uh, for uh, me? To... Uh, 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 uh. Magic what now, son? <laughs> I'm. S- oh oh, right. A magic um magic crystal doodad. We call it an obelisk. Obelisk, right. I'm just wondering if I if I put in a whole lot of hard work for no reason when I was a boy. <laughs> oh, well, you can do that. That's how you learn new things. He uh he shows you like a bunch of books. So, I'm going to give you one chance while we take a small <laughs> break. I'm going to give you Oh, wait, we don't have it. Shit. Okay. <laughs> uh an abjuration cantrip. Ooh, all right. If you can like look one up real quick, it can give you a scroll of one of those. All this after the break. (gasps) We'll see you right back at the table. Welcome back to the table. So have you uh, figured out the spell that you... 
I did. I got uh, resistance. It's a lot like my Bardic Inspiration dice, but it specifically applies to saving throw rolls. Oh, yeah. Let's uh, let's people roll add an extra 1d4. So here's how this works. I kind of skipped out on telling you what the device's name was, and I apologize, so let me fix that right now. Oh. Sure. The devices are called Turners. Turners? Yes. Yeah, I was going to say, they're kind of like those Da Vinci Code codexes, aren't they? they kind of. They seem like it. The idea of that was that, yeah. yeah. But, I uh, it was just a fancy So this is how time. Turners work. Turners are how bards only are able to transcribe their magic. So no other magic class can be able to use Turners, and Turners are only set... I was going to say, we can't hand this to Ziaka or Red and be like, <laughs> no, give no. us some of your fireballs. Yeah, no, <laughs> just mo mountains of fireballs. Let's go. No. How this works is the bard that the turner is given to is only works through them. How okay. this works is is whatever spell that whatever spell slot you're able to cast, you could be like, hey, I see a level three spell or something like you. I'm guessing you're level five now, right? right. So you can do threes. Yep. So any spell slot that you're able to actually be able to cast, if you find any written documentation that you're able to read or any like scrolls or whatnot. You're able to, uh, you're able to take whatever written word that is of a spell that you don't know, speak of it into the Turner, and it writes it down into scroll form Ooh. for anyone else to read. So you can't go to Ziaka and be like, "Hey, speak into the Turner for me," because all the Turner would do is do absolutely nothing to her. And even if it did speak through you, you would hear Ziaka's people's thoughts through your head, and it'd be a jumbled fucking mess. <laughs> so the paper would come out just like. Hiss, hiss, sniss, sniss, <laughs> boop the snoot. And I had a uh, quick question about the mask I was given. It does not count as, it, it's not a actual helmet, right? It's not going to count no, as No, okay, there is no, there is no stat to it. It's purely cosmetic. Excellent. Okay. Because uh, unarmored defense is very important for me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's purely cosmetic. One punch from that, one punch to that thing and it's going to probably crack in half. That's also not quite good. I'm going to have to look for, like, a leather mask that's, like, a shark <laughs> thing, but we'll deal with that later. Yeah. You're going to have to get that custom made, which uh, I probably... We didn't get a chance to explain that because everything was happening so fast. This is the place you get it done. It's a crafting, general, and, like, exotic goods store. All right. Maybe I can trade this mask for something like that. Uh, People seem to like barter. Yeah. Yep. So now Isaac looks to you and goes, Okay, well, now that that's complete and you have your turner and your medallion... Let's talk payment. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I basically... Let's talk payment, and he speaks to you in Thieves Cant, and a time and place where we can discuss other things. Of course, I respond. <laughs> uh, so you said that with, you know, with the rights to the song, or, <laughs> or the story, uh, we also owe you 10,000 gold, is that correct? Oh, no, 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 no. You're, you're mistaken. These are not rights. This is not some sort of organization where the written word, far be it, the entire school's name, the wandering script, who am I to judge you in saying, I wish to speak of it in this way? Right. <laughs> so 10,000 gold. Yes. <laughs> Says Ezra. He's, he's trying to flower it up for everyone else because he doesn't want anyone to lean in on this conversation. Right, yeah. <laughs> he's telling you, like, the benefits of this school, as in, dude, shut up, don't draw attention. <laughs> yeah. Of course, the tuition fee. That's what we're here for. Yes. Uh, well, I, I basically pull over and give uh, Eloy. So, all right, 10000 How much do you think you need to, to swing that? Cause I mean, I, I might be able to swing that myself. Let me see here. I got my... Ah, but I'm going to be benefiting from this, too. So here you go. I just throw you 3000 gold. <laughs> okay. Then, then, yeah, I can pay him in, uh, in cash right now with that. Radical. Yep, so you give him the 10000 Just imagine Eloy's... Picking up this big sack of gold. <laughs> yeah. you well, do you prefer co coins or bars? <laughs> <laughs> you no, just, that'd be an so, unmarked bill. No, 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 no. So do you remember that scene from Futurama where the guy raises his eyebrow and then pushes it down manually? <laughs> That's literally what Isaac does. <laughs> you know what? Bars are easier to, to carry around. I got, I got these boys here. I got... Uh, that's that's twenty five hundred worth in bars, and uh, here's the rest in coins. We can arrange this. <laughs> Even the fucking the lady behind the reception desk is just like, just perks up. What? 
What? That's tuition one... here's like a hundred thousand. This shouldn't be that big of a that's deal. That's one rich centaur. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what she's like. She's like, where did you come from? Normally it's the calls and everyone else who have that kind of <laughs> cash. She did not expect you to actually pony up for the tuition. <laughs> yeah, we did. We did some work back in back in in Jahal Cove, and they. They was not quite as free with their money as folks are around here, but they seem to do all right. Yeah, they uh, they rewarded us handsomely for plenty of help. Again, various stories to tell. There was somebody making zombos out of their boys. Sorry, we don't have to. You know, we don't have to bore these fine folks with the details right now, Eloy. We can do that later. When I got my whole head bitten by a raptor. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I saw it. <laughs> All right, well, <laughs> speaking of, if any bit of Eloy's stories that he uh, regales you with seem even slightly untrue, uh, I, as, long, as well as many others, are eyewitnesses to most of them. So uh, we'll have plenty of support for any of these. Where will we have our more private discussion about the story? Hmm, well, uh, I don't know what your schedule looks like today. I have a meeting going on uh, Later today at the uh, the shipwreck tavern. Uh, that said, if you would want to meet up either there or here, we can figure that out uh, sometime. Let's say later tomorrow. Very well. What we will we will have our meeting early in the morning tomorrow. Then sounds great. Hey Eloy, roll perception check. All right. Because there's a uh, fine red uh, there's a fine red dress black cat in the corner of your eye again. Uh, 26. He's gone. Sly bastard. Did, could I tell if it was, uh, if it was Convictora? You saw the tail just before someone walked into your field of vision and it was gone. That's where I saw him again! So, what? The, 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 the kitty cat man, Convictora <gasps> from the ship. That's right. Uh, Mr. Thorne, can we actually bother you for one, uh, small thing? I say in Cant's, uh, in, in Thieves' Cant, this might not be something we want everybody to hear. Mm, I see. Well, I saw a small discrepancy with your contract. Please follow me into the private room. Of course. Elo, you come along too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. What do you, what's that language? I thought I knew Elvish. Uh, it's not Elvish. It's kind of a, it's sort of like a special secret trade language. I'll teach it to you later. I always imagine they're speaking jive whenever they do it. <laughs> Look, man, what cold turkey's is, not going to cut it. <laughs> <laughs> I just always assume it sounds like whispers. Like just <laughs> one, of my, one of my friends used to believe that Thieves Can't was like if you were speaking Esperanto or JavaScript to someone. <laughs> <laughs> so he takes you, uh, he takes you into like one of the private rooms where it looks like there's like a really huge round table. He like shuts the door and then turns to look at you. What did you need to discuss? So the other night, uh, we were our our ship was visited by an un uninvited guest, uh, and the only one who got to really speak to him at all was Eloy. Uh, but we found physical evidence of his appearance, so we know this wasn't just some hallucination. Yeah. Oh, oh Calliope said they might get real mad if we talked about this. I understand, but that's why I kind of ushered him. Oh, oh. To, to be by ourselves. We understand that this might be a bit of a, a sensitive, raw nerve kind of topic. Uh, Are you speaking about the College of Whispers? Yeah. That's our benefactor. Oh, well. I assume you've met Mr. Convictora. Yes. Yeah, he was on that ship, our ship, last night. We'll be having a meeting with him tomorrow morning. Is this... Now, look, the, all I know about y'all, I, I learned from our fawn friend from Venom Island, and she said never to say that name, that what you just said. Not Convictora, the other oh, one. Oh, she's not wrong. You never speak about it to anyone else who's not in the know. Well, all right, then. Uh, interesting. Unless you want the guards here. Do you want the guards here? Definitely not. That is not something we're looking for at all. Fantastic. I then just want to make sure that... Uh, you know, people seem to talk talk about them in hushed tones. I just want to make sure there's not going to be a problem with our contract. Uh, oh, of course not. Okay. Just so long as you don't talk to the wrong person about it. Well, we don't plan on talking to anyone about them, should they... Uh, That's very good. You know, should, should there be no conflict with us or them? It makes sense to me. Think of it this way, sailor friends. Loose lips sink ships. Oh, <laughs> I've heard that many a times. Do y'all offer classes in the... 
in the tightening of lips. <laughs> like like just to just to train that one up and You know, strangely enough, we actually have a scroll that mends mouths clothes. <laughs> I don't think that's what we're looking for exactly. By actually ripping them away to another dimension and then ba- letting them come back a few minutes later. It was an odd spell, <laughs> really odd spell. I can sell it to you. <laughs> Very intense silence. <laughs> I mean, I, I learned how to... I mean, if we're talking about literally making sounds not be sounds no more, I can do that one real good. Oh, I mean just ripping one's mouth away from their face for a good whole <laughs> ten minutes. That sounds like a very roundabout way of getting to the same thing. I, I think I'm... I mean, theoretically, we could keep having a conversation while keeping someone else from talking, which could maybe be useful, but perhaps not what we're looking for. Oh, no, it's just a practical joke. Oh, okay, thank God. Oh. <laughs> You were scaring me there, Mr. Thorne. Either way. Please, uh, you're at a bard college, for God's <laughs> sake. Comedy does seem to be a big thing around here. I did ma- I did minor in satire college. Here you are. Here's the spell. He hands you a scroll. He looks to you. Thank you. You're welcome. Be careful. It might, like, shock you or something when you open it. I don't know what kind of humor these guys are into. <laughs> Is that all? I... Uh, Basically, we wanted to know about this uh, this Convictora fellow. Is is there anything we should know? He seemed, uh, meaning absolutely no disrespect to you or 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 his you know associates. He just seemed very ominous when he appeared, and I uh, I just want to make sure that's he... how he is. Okay, that's how most people are in the College of Whispers. They're very macabre. That sound, that's a pretty apt description from what Eloy gave me. Um, Don't let that sway you. I mean. The man does have a way with very horrible magics, but we try to keep an open mind, and being afraid of things that some don't understand is not what Mr. Convictor's other benefactors are about. That makes sense. So, all right, I just wanted to make sure that he wasn't going to be a danger to us so long as we're not, you know, bothering him. As long as you don't mean him any real harm, he'll appear spooky, but he means no ill will. Excellent. That's... Basically what I was looking for. Uh, Eloy, is there anything you would like to ask? You, After all, you met the man. Was he really there? <laughs> what do you mean, was he really there? Like, physically there? We found this, this crystal ball later, and I don't know, seemed... To... Oh, a scrying orb. No, that was probably an illusion. But he also brought a pamphlet. Yeah, how'd that get there? That was physically there. Mage hand. All right. From the island? From from here? From land? Oh, no. He has a small vessel that carries him back and forth through the silence of night. We looked pretty hard and saw no sign of it, but yeah, he might have just really covered his water tracks. Have you ever thought about using that to deliver the mail? Because, boy, that'd be so useful. <laughs> if I could send a letter home to my daddy? <sighs> well... <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, uh, we're, we're, there, we're there is the, no, tangent, there, there is the Rock Postal Service. Send a giant bird out to <laughs> fucking, and I'm not being a shit. I mean <laughs> that seriously. That, <laughs> it's a living. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, we we always saw we used to see the big giant birds flying overhead, but we. We just sort of assumed that they were going to swoop down and snatch us up because most things back home want to kill us. <laughs> We'd always hide. Were we hiding from the mailman? It is amazing you weren't stronger coming up in such a terrifying <laughs> environment. Where are you from? Old Lady Big Rock Mountain. No, they were probably trying to kill you then. Okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> because he's just like, what the fuck? Okay, you know what? No, it was probably a real One rock. One of the most dangerous lands on Earth. <laughs> <laughs> the Forbidden Zone? Lock Serranus. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, he does... By the by, the by uh, you can actually, like, pick up other, like, level one spells should you want to in written form. You can't use them, but you can use them on your turner if you want to. However... Uh, he does tell you that he will sell you other musical instruments if you're interested in stuff like that. St- and there are musical instruments that actually will do the cantrips if you use them with a three-day charge. Hmm. A three times a day charge, I apologize. Three times a day. But they will cost a pretty penny. Remember, this place is fucking yeah. expensive. Yeah, and Eloy's, Eloy's pretty tapped after that, so... <laughs> I mean, I guess he's got a... F- yeah, that's good walking around money, though. Yeah. <laughs> D- don't want to... 
Don't worry. That's why totally I didn't want you to broke. pay for the whole thing because I was like, if we can share this burden, that'll make it easier for <laughs> both you and I. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm. Th- thank you kindly. I might. I might just take this and. You know, the last time I bet on them fight pits, I did real good. That's true. So, you know, if I if I do good at the fight pits, I might come back. A gambling man. It worked out real well before. Hmm. To be fair, we have had a knack of good luck. So, you know, that's natural wonders and all that. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Title when, drop. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you're betting on our friends, I don't consider it gambling. That's true. It's a, just a confident <laughs> vote of support. Very well. Well, your time here is done unless you want to do anything else. If there's, right. if there's like any spell you're looking for, any musical instrument, anything you want to get out of him, uh, anything else? Uh, actually, I, I, I am curious. This might not come into effect right away. But as far as just like the, uh, the alumni here, once they graduate, what's usually like the career path after that? Do they normally have somewhere they go or do they just kind of stick around here and just keep studying up their skills? Oh, well, their performances can take them elsewhere. Some of our alumni actually work for the calls themselves. Oh, interesting. Some of them, let's be real here, a lot of the, let's, let's rap talk for a second. <laughs> yeah, turns his chair hey around. Hey, kids. <laughs> hey, kids. Let me tell you the ways. Let of- me tell you about art colleges. <laughs> yeah. Let, let's be honest about art degrees. <laughs> anyway, go on, uh, sir, uh, Mr. Thorne. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> kind of got lost in. Retrospective. I'm a theater major. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you about my English degree, kids. <laughs> God, like fucking poor Isaac is having nom flashbacks. <laughs> the student. All loans. the quash. No, no more quash. It's five hundred dollars. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> All right. Uh, some people work for the calls. Other people go off and actually go out with adventures and make uh, profit off of that. Some folks uh, make books. Some folks actually own opera houses in other towns. Excellent. Is there, um, I, I'm just, again, a curious man of business. Uh, you know, is there any sort of, like, do people post job listings or anything? Or that they are, like, where would I go to find entrepreneurial artists uh, who might be graduating from these schools? Oh, that you would come here. Okay. Excellent. If there are any around uh, who haven't been snatched up by any other opportunities or haven't gone off to travel and do mostly those who actually obtain uh, obtained their degrees through the larger sums of money means they then either move on to other colleges to get more of their degrees to make them even more notable uh, when you get this degree actually our colleges all around the world start to like learn of you and actually try to paddle you off to other jobs as well Excellent. so if you're looking for someone with certain talents, we can point you in the right direction, though we can probably only get you what, uh, we can probably only get you talent that's local. We can't really get you anything that's bigger. Absolutely understandable. Just just so you understand uh, where I'm coming from, I'm eventually planning, uh, we're in the planning phases right now, eventually putting on a traveling show. And obviously the more talent we can have, the better. And your colleges seem to be a fine venue for that. And obviously we would love to pay them, Fair wages, all that kind of stuff. Uh, just looking into you know future prospects, and this seems like it might be a ripe place to look into. This would be the right. place. Excellent. Thank you. That was all the information I was looking for. Uh, with that, Eloy, unless you have anything else to ask, I I don't know if that's the end. Of- Actually, yeah. Question. You, do you know them dem- them Demos boys? You just seem to be in the. <laughs> <laughs> you just seem. Eric. You just seem to be in the same sort of business. Eloy, this might not be the time. Strong's the one we sent talking. About. Mm. I'm I'm just curious if you're like friends or or like more like competitors or or Deimos is the god of secrets. I mean it's common knowledge everyone knows about uh Deimos. Those those who have any sort of willing faith or want to at least know about them, knowing of Deimos is not secret. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I was just curious what you're... rather forward to ask if you might know him, though. <laughs> you're, you're pretty much asking someone what their religion is. Yeah. You're, you're asking him, hey, do you know, have you ever heard of our Lord and Savior, Deimos? <laughs> yeah, it's like, are you, do you want to talk about the Lord? <laughs> <laughs> we, we know of them. I know probably there are some people in this college. Hell, I'm sure most people, there's a, probably a bunch of people around here who have some sort of affinity towards him. 
Okay, so it's it's kind of a kind of a do what you feel sort of thing. Although we do re uh, do remember, most of the folks here from Iberkal are very very largely into Salima. Yeah, folks seem to like Salima a whole whole heap yeah, around here. Salima seems to be pretty popular. Well, can you blame them? I mean, most of the Asmar here are affiliated to her. Mm -hmm. Some of them believe that they actually are children of Salima, which is ludicrous. Well, everyone has a right to their beliefs. Well, after all. their blood. Well, they have the blood to back it up, of course, but they don't have uh, they don't have the divine right to say that they are the voice of Salima. Of course, I mean. Again, uh, everything's up to people's own, uh, you know, interpretations. Unless you and see an acolyte, and she has made herself quite known. Hmm. She's not here. Frankly, I don't know where she is. I don't keep up on events like that. But she has made herself known. The acolyte, uh, the acolyte of uh, Salima, is a real thing. She's made herself publicly visible to the to everyone, and has spoken out and shown the abilities of. Salima herself, but where is she is now and what she's doing, that is out of my uh, scope of knowledge. Hmm. Interesting stuff. Well, anyway. All right. Well, I, I, think that, I think that covers all the knowledge we were seeking. Thank you very much for your time, Mr. Thorne. Uh, the school seems like you've got a wonderful operation going here, and uh, we will be happy to uh, you know, return to discuss more of our terms as well as uh, get ready for that Battle of the Bands. See you tomorrow. Excellent. All right, well, it is now at like 12 o'clock, almost 1 p.m. in the afternoon. Which means we've probably headed already over there to go get some lunch. Yep, so to you... await the meeting. You are pretty much heading over towards uh, 2 right there. It's all the way down there. I'll move it. No, oh, no, over here. Ah. You are dangerously close to the gladiatorial pits. There are <laughs> folks just like dressed to the teeth in weaponry and armor, just walking around, having a good time, like just like broing it up and eating all sorts of food and uh, and mead and, and drinking to their heart's content. This place seems like a smorgasbord of just just fighters wanting to just peace, uh, just to break bread and just to chill out. Oh, Nedra would really like this place. I say, just kind of like looking around. There is that side, and then there's the side over on the uh, over to the right of it, where there's like more like general people's food, like stuff like the nobles will want to sit down and have and eat. There's a lot of like different cuisines here. Actually, there's actually uh, some stuff from the Merfolk. There's some stuff from Ibercal. Uh There's actually a bit of cuisine that comes from the mainland, and also there's a couple of uh, Kobold and Dragonborn actually working at one place, like putting up like uh, a meat stand, like a like big barbecue pit. I look over to Calliope. So, uh, what place strikes your fancy while we wait for uh, the meeting? Uh, she you... she heads over to like the uh, the Ibercal stands. She wants to eat more of the local cuisine, uh, which most of the cuisine here actually looks like uh, it's very lean looking steaks with very very plentiful like almost root looking vegetables. Like there, it looks almost like. A head of broccoli that also leans into what looks like a turnip, and it's some weird purple white. But when you when you uh, when you slice into it, it actually lets off a really really aromic wafting smell that like you could just feel the taste drip on your mouth the moment you smell it. Well, I'm willing to try anything once, I guess. You go for a taste of it. Yeah. Well, I. Oh, you. I, do you I, I, eat I, that, I, yeah, we we put in orders for whatever we're eating and find a place to. I yeah. mean, is this a sit-down establishment? Or are they coming to us, or are we sit going Sit down to outside kind okay. of thing. So you get your food. You sit down outside. She orders that dish. Uh, did you want to order the same thing, or did you want to get something else? What else was on the menu? Uh, we have the giant barbecue pit. You oh, have, no, uh, I meant from this establishment. Oh, from this establishment? Yeah. It's very small portions of very tiny food. They doesn't what are the look, merfolk it, serving? It doesn't look very <laughs> filling. It just looks... It, you, you're looking at them, they're actually serving fish eggs in some of this food. Like, this is totally <laughs> rich people stuff. So like, they're the Lottie da merfolk. La, the, no, not, not the merfolk. This is uh, from the Ibercal section. Uh, okay. Like, apart from, like, the vegetables that are really big, the meat's very small and lean. They're really into, like, the growth of the vegetables more than they are the actual carving of meat. Okay, so what are the what's the merfolk stand serving? I'm guessing merfolk stand is fish, standard yeah. affair fish. Uh, there's a really strange, uh, like 
large, almost looks like barracuda that stretches out. Like, they actually have custom plates to put out the entire flank of the fish. Done. All right, you take a bite out of that. Uh, yeah, I order that, and then I go sit with Calliope. All righty, so she, you guys sit down, have a nice meal. You guys... <laughs> You guys uh, up here as well. Probably heading our way there. All right, yep. Cool. Uh, Grammy's there. You don't know how. You don't know where. But she's <laughs> she's just been following. <laughs> no, she's been following this whole time. She's actually going to each like stall and asking like for different types of food. <laughs> what are your secret ingredients? Yeah. Is that what you use? You call that a feast? You pathetic fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Just getting sassed by this old sea hag. <laughs> you call this a five-star establishment? It's not even worth one! Bah! <laughs> I spit on your food! I curse your food! <laughs> <laughs> you have no... Everyone just looks to you. We have no affiliation with this woman. <laughs> I look at the stand that she is yelling at, and I go to the stand that is the farthest away from that. <laughs> oh, that's the tavern. <laughs> oh, Okay. Uh, I guess the second one. Whatever one would be serving food. So you're pretty much just grabbing the same food then, yeah, I guess. Yeah. I go up to Grammy. Grammy, what do you recommend here? What's the least worst Nothing, one? Nothing! It's all terrible! Oh, but I'm real hungry. Don't worry, sweetie. When you get back to the ship, I'll cook you something. Hooray! Eloy, you'd probably like what she's having. I point at what, uh... I, I point at well, sure, if you like vegetables. trash. I do like trash. This looks horrible, but I'm so hungry that I will I will reluctantly eat it anyway. <laughs> just a little bit of it. The merchants are just so sad at what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, like this looks awful, but I'll have it. <laughs> he doesn't want to hurt Grammy's feelings. Yeah, but but in proxy, he's hurting all the people who are gonna serve him food that possibly could spit or piss in it. <laughs> Grammy, I'm so sorry, but if I don't eat something now, I might be so weak I can't get back to the ship. I understand. To eat your you cooking. wanna you wanna have your bread instead of a steak? I get it. Filler food. <laughs> now, now, Grammy, I say, trying it's, to be. Nah, nurse. don't don't touch me. I'm gonna get out of here. I it's, know where I'm not wanted. <laughs> it it'll make yours taste better by comparison. Good. The secret ingredient will be the hearts of those who run these terrible stores! Now, Grammy, we can't threaten violence on these fine people. Yes, we can! They're just doing their job. She, she you guys she's might want to lock your doors tonight. <laughs> uh, uh, she might not be kidding. <laughs> the guards are looking at you now, just like... Like, all, all the all the Azamar boys, like, all the angelic fucking plate mail wearing dudes are looking at you, just like... I look at them. She is a force of nature. We literally have no control. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you guys gather. Uh, Onslow's there as well. Hey, how'd and, the hunting go? And Ziaka showed up as well. Yeah. You find anything of uh, significance? I ask her while I'm chowing down on some, I believe you said barracuda. Yeah. Mm. So you're talking to Ziaka? Yeah. The compass has led me here. To here, here? Yes. Whatever this meeting you're having with, this person has some connection to it. Oh, hmm. well, that'll be interesting. <clears throat> Meanwhile, there's Onslow. He actually came back with like a giant plate of just like piled on what almost it, is that? Yeah, no, that's an entire like half of a horse on a plate. <laughs> Ooh, I'll have what he's having. There you go, son. This might Fill be a up. bit much for you. <laughs> no, he ha he hands it like. Fred Flintstone put the thing on the side of his dive in. <laughs> there you go. Yay! Gives you the old horse haunch. Yep. <laughs> Calliope's just sitting there with just abject fear. I mean, I know he's not a horse, but is that still some kind of cannibal? Yeah. I honestly don't know. <laughs> I mean, he. I guess you're eating really... barracuda. That's probably just as closely related, so. Well, okay. Do you consider eating some form of monkey to be. Mm. I mean, you. You mammals eat monkey, right? Do I know what a monkey is? <laughs> you do know what a monkey is. I'm like, you don't even have to roll that. Oh, okay. <laughs> we were in a jungle. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, there's there's Onslow just like, any port in a storm, son. You know what? That's a fair point, Onslow. I'm with him. <laughs> Calliope is now looking at you with just the worst fucking like mouth open horror. This is not okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this one was never a person, right? Like that, See, that, it's fine. It's not a centaur, is it? Onslow just looks at you. 
don't know. <laughs> it had four legs, and I shot it. It had, it had four legs. No, I didn't shoot it. <laughs> I'm not. Apparently, I learned some big news around here. Oh. So oh. you know all them elephant things that are on their flags and whatnot? Yeah. Uh, apparently, the calls find these things divinity. Oh. So no guess elephant we, hunting. Guess we shouldn't shoot them. Mm, I guess. It's kind of unfortunate. I actually had a mind to hunt one. It looked like fun game. Maybe well, on another island. Uh, yeah, I was going to say. Perhaps there are elephants other, elsewhere that you can hunt. Again, the the bo- all the Eber cowboys now hear that, and they're like, oh, they <laughs> narrow eyes at you thinking that you want to hunt an elephant. That, that's, some, that's some pretty bad mojo. Like, a lot of people around here are actually kind of taken back by that. The elephant is very... Not that we would. Just, you know, if you, <laughs> this individual... Oh, really? throw on someone to the bus, why don't you? <laughs> For oh. legal purposes. <laughs> I don't think he cares what the calls think of him. That makes sense. <laughs> oh my god, of course he's here. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, they all just sound like that. Well, I that. mean, it would make sense. He's looking for a champion. <laughs> You'll have... Uh, the Oso actually comes up to, beside you. You'll have to forgive most of the people here. The elephant is one of the, our... Is our countrymen's... Uh, mammal of choice. It is seen as a high sta- uh, high status symbol amongst the calls. Oh, absolutely. It's just our friend Onslow here kind of seeks to hunt everything, uh, <laughs> including those, I believe, of sentient nature. So really, uh, you know, a divine elephant, that doesn't seem out of his wheelhouse. I'm being just a realist. I would advise against that. Understandable. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep these comments to a minimum then, sir. How do you like this island so far? I've been having a great time. The, n- no offense to, to Jahal Cove. I know a lot of y'all are from there. This is my very favorite island I've ever been to, and that's that's including the spooky stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you wearing the medallion as we speak? Oh, yeah. You, like, pin that, right? Like, look what I got. Yep. That's, so. a, fan- that's a fancy necklace you got there, Eloy. <laughs> oh, no. I do believe that. Oh, yes. He actually has just become an initiate of the Wandering Script College. Congratulations, Eloy. They, they taught me so much cool stuff already. Yeah, we were there for all of like an hour, and he's learned so much. It's incredible. Did they give you that device that most of the bards walk around with? Yeah, guys, this is amazing. I thought I'd have to study real hard for like months and years before I, I knew how to write stuff down. Now I can just do it. Just with this thing. It's kind of an amazing device. And also incredible security. Apparently it will only work for him, so we don't have to be worried about it falling into the wrong hands or something, which, was my, which was my initial concern. <laughs> the, those wrong hands would have a donkey man to answer to if they got near it. <laughs> Let me tell you what. Catch these hooves. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you don't mind, uh, I've actually had our I had our prince's bodyguard and the uh, lieutenant of the uh, and the lieutenant of the navy come uh, have dinner with us as well. If you wouldn't mind, sounds fine to me. Brim down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a couple like you watch as time goes on. Like you're having uh, you're having your feast. Everyone's eating. Though the guards are now kind of shooing everyone to leave, like they're watching as other people are leaving, but not letting other people <laughs> private in. Private dinner. Yep. You pretty much now you guys are getting an Man, open outside. Man, this is the only way dinner. into the fight pit too. That must <laughs> suck. Mm-hmm. It's been closed off, but uh, you watch as actually like some drunk like some drunk dude kind of like meanders up the stairs, and like you see the guards kind of like push him back, just like, sir, you cannot come this way. But I want to go to the fight pit. You can't stop me. Just hoist him up. <laughs> they like bore a. Gl- uh, there's a glaze in the in these I, boys' eyes. I, I, I look at the boy. Are you looking to fight or are you looking to watch? I'm looking to watch and make money. I want. I want my price. Uh, like, that's a shame. I hear there's a guy around here looking for a champion, and he's willing to pay a pretty penny. <clears throat> like the guards just like holding him, just like he needs to leave. That's fine. <laughs> Uh, but do go ahead and look for an Edward Caster if you're looking to fight, because uh, he's looking for a champion, and you look like a strapping lad. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, he just watches the guard actually, like, hoist him up and throw him down the <laughs> stairs. <laughs> Bye! I think he got the message. He'll make good fodder. <laughs> you sound, bo- you hear bone crunching. <laughs> my leg, my leg! <laughs> Career over before it began. Alrighty. Uh, 
as the as the sun's beginning to set, a bunch of the boys who are standing around, all the uh, Asimar boys, their their hair is now actually starting to like blaze up and actually make like torchlight around them as the sun's dipping down. I uh, nudge Ezra. Hey, do you think you do a quick touch up on my makeup? I'm getting a little sweaty. Shh, 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 sure. Is there like any sort of roll? Yeah, I do stealth. The figured. <laughs> All right, stealth. Twenty-seven. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. As as the guards are looking away, as you're eating, you're kind of just like touching up a little bit. <laughs> what? So, like Oso actually like turns to look like the turtle just like turns to look at you. Sonny, are you okay? Oh, it's just a little warm in here with the uh, angels heating up the place. Yes, I apologize. It's no, quite it's not un- your fault. It's quite uncommon for most folks who aren't accustomed to it. I apologize for this inconvenience. He has a pretty wicked combo. He has to wear a lot of clothes due to the way his skin reacts to things. But he also comes from a very cold land, so heat is not exactly his uh, thing. So, you know, just kind of a... Well, fear I not. I just, I just point my hand in front of my face. It's okay, I got this. And just create, like, a small little gust of wind perpetually using my elemental attunement. Oh, well, fear not. Uh, fear not, my boy. Uh, as the night approaches, so too will the temperature drop. Good. Real, That'll be nice. Real quick roll perception. I'm going to see if I notice. Didn't his hand get marked for that <laughs> gamble? Yep, roll okay. it. Roll perception. Uh, 18. Oh, yeah, it's clear as day. You could see it on the back of his hand. Oh, uh, Sheldon, did you fancy a tattoo while you were here? We'll talk about it later. I may have made an agreement with somebody, or a bit of a wager. Oso turns to look at you. Oh, you've made a gentleman's bet with someone here. Yeah, uh, Mr. Edward Castor. Kind of a ponce, but... Oh, he's a very established lawyer. He's a very, very rich and powerful man. Not in legal trouble, are you, Shell? No, no, I I looked over that... No, I didn't. Uh, Calliope, <laughs> Calliope holds her hands up. No, it's he. Calliope holds her hand up. No, he tried to buy me a dress, and the and Mr. Castor tried to take all the possessions away from him with flaunting his money. Huh. And Oso kind of like looks to you and goes, "Oh, I see. That's rather unfortunate. If you don't mind, did you have some sort of legal documentation?" Uh, yeah. Here, I show him the uh, signed. He take he takes it and starts writing it down. He gives it back to you. Uh-huh. As of this time, it is null and void. We will speak to Mr. Castor, and all belongings that he tried to have taken from you will be brought back to your ship. No, oh, well, we well we actually made a bit of a bet. I, all I wanted to do was uh, prove him wrong. He hasn't taken anything from oh, me except you, that dress that I bought. You do actually wish to go forth with this? Well, I mean, whether or not this is null and void, I would still like to have uh, my champion fight his. I did promise somebody a good fight. I see. Well, we can arrange for that. We can still have that happen, but I do not wish to have uh, your friend here have goods that she wished to buy be taken away from her. Well, that is By the call's decree, I can see it done. Well, that is greatly appreciated. Tell Mr. Castor that I would gladly accept another wager in this stead. Very well. As I don't s- wish for there to be bad blood here, and I still want the fight to go on, because I sa- wish to see him crumble. As you say <laughs> that, a... Uh, 5'10", dark, ha- uh, dark brown-haired humanoid with three wings on her back, the third sprouting from her spine, and the very tips of her hair are made of small tongues of fire. Everybody she's wearing a fire. She's wearing a plate mail and holding a and has a great scimitar and shield behind her back. That's very admirable. She actually comes up to you. You, the heat coming from this woman is ghastly. <laughs> I kick up the gust a little. <laughs> add a little mist to it. <laughs> <laughs> You are now... Okay, congratulations, everyone. Wake is now a sprinkler system. (laughs) I hope that doesn't affect the makeup we just put on you. There's no such... What are you talking about? (laughs) I don't say that. Oh, okay. I'm just thinking it. It's out of character, sorry. It's just... There's Eloy. What makeup? It's just just a light mist that's (laughs) cooling the air. Yeah, I, I like to stick to my guns. Your what? Uh... Basically, keep my word. It's a turn of phrase. We don't have guns. Ah, of course. <laughs> Not on us. We apologize. It's She actually turns to Onslow and looks. There's a blunderbuss on his I mean, back. He has well, okay. We don't. Onslow, I mean, he's part of our crew, but he's sort of an independent man. <laughs> he's security. He won't harm you. Uh, he's here so, to make sure we're safe. Ah, so then he's 
of my same ilk, then. Yes. <sighs> Sir, Sir, Sir Paul Junium, I am the prince's bodyguard. Could you How do you spell that? that? <laughs> Serpil, S-E-R-P-I-L, Junium, J-U-N-I-E-M. Serpil Junium. Is the prince your long-lost pal? I have been with the prince since he was born. I am like his second mother. Okay, so not long lost then. Got it. Thanks. <laughs> uh, I'm Sheldon Flash, first mate of the Elden. Ezra Lockwood, captain of the Elden. Hi, I'm Eloy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. I do music on the Elden. Ah, the fool of the Elden then. Ah, that seems a little harsh. <laughs> What's a fool? Somebody who entertains and makes people laugh. Yeah, one of them. I apologize. I'm very used to speaking to the common class and hearing their vernacular. Um, I believe the term, the proper colloquialism is jester? Closer to bard, but yeah. Like you, you hear like a deep like accent in her voice. She's trying really hard to actually yeah. find the word. She's not being malicious. Right. I understand where you're coming from and appreciate your, your, your attempts to, uh, you know, Properly address that, That's why Oso is there. He's the guy who's like going like, no, 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 no. <laughs> that's actually not the proper term. He is entertainment. Ah. So a fool still. Serpil, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, around the table I point, uh, this is uh, this is Calliope. She is the uh, ambassador of Vernon. Venon. Venon. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I, even, I even Calliope looks, my R like... looks like an N, or my N looks like an R. <laughs> Ah yes, it'll be very uh, it'll be very nice to speak to you. I actually hear uh, the lot of you have suffered a great plight, as my men have told me. I'd like to hear this story, but we will. In, in the meantime, I will obtain my dinner while we wait for Adm uh, Lieutenant Gore to appear. The fish is great, I say as I finish off my barracuda. Ah yes, so the just, uh, uh, no. daggerfish. Yes. A very fine delicacy. When cooked properly, it actually adds fertility to one's strength. Ooh. Hmm. That's what that feeling is. Hey, no, uh... Never had it cooked. So you're, you, you hear, like, footsteps, like, banging down. And it's coming up the staircase. There's, like, the silhouette of a man within the sun coming up the staircase. Ah, yes. Uh, then Oso turns. Ah, Gore is here. Real quick, I want to whisper something to uh, Sheldon. <laughs> what do you want to say to Sheldon? Uh, I just go, hey, look, uh, I may have signed a contract about stuff with us and uh, telling our story, so uh, just think of it for legal reasons. Do you want to be the one to tell him what happened on Venom Island? <laughs> sure. Awesome, thanks. <laughs> I haven't had time to make up a song about it yet. Uh, yeah. Again, I'm not entirely sure on the details. This might be me going overly cautious, but you know, better safe than sorry, all that kind of stuff. Trying to be a responsible captain, you know. I just kind of like look around like, okay. <laughs> like I have no idea what that means. I'm gonna be in a battle of the bands, it's fine. Yeah, it, it's gonna be fun. I got an Ender a fight tomorrow, that'll be. Awesome, when? Uh, noon. Okay, we should be able to make that. We made our thing kind of early in the morning. All right, well, she'll be happy. All right, get ready for this, boy. As the guards stand at attention, part to the side, as this man comes with an entourage of naval officers standing beside him. Oh, God, this again. Weathered, bronze-skinned, standing six foot two, very physically fit, this man seems to be somewhere in his 40s and 50s. Lightly grayed hair combed to the back, his skin almost seems to have a visibly reflective shine to it as he's walking through the sunlight. You can just smell the scent of cigar coming off this man. It is just palpable, cigar? but he is okay. not smoking. Okay. He is, he is he a just smokes a lot. <laughs> oh no, he doesn't look like he smokes at all. He just, like, the his smell is just, just exude there. The his body exudes his the smell of burning musk. wood. His cigar. cigar. Okay. This is a man's man. 
this m- this Hulk this man bleeds <laughs> scotch. This this man hulks over, kind of like over to you guys. As he gets closer, he just gets taller and taller and taller. You Somehow watch. Somehow stays six two. No, you you look. Yeah, that six two is a matter of perspective. You look down at his shadow. It's getting huge and overcasting. He stands over and looks down at the lot of you. Uh, Lieutenant Gorite. Hello, it's me, <laughs> Lieutenant Gore. <laughs> Sits down. I heard we're here to have a little get together. Oh yes, you must be the folks from the Yeldon. That's us. Absolutely. This man has the biggest fucking smile on his face. He is the most jovial motherfucker you've ever seen. He is just happy to fucking be living. <laughs> I have nothing to offer this man. <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant oh, you look like the prettiest of asinine centaurs I've ever seen. Have you seen other asinine centaurs? Of I'm course be- I have, son. I've been a weathered person all here and there. <laughs> Lieutenant so. Gore, it is an honor. Uh, allow me to present, uh, you know, we just came from uh, the Isle of Venon. Uh, here is a signet ring that I was told to get, to give you uh, just to show that, you know, we have met affiliates of yours. You watch as this man's fingers reach over your grinding stone. <laughs> oh, of course. That old fawn bastard of mine. <laughs> and uh, this is his granddaughter, the ambassador from Venom. Oh, little Calliope, it's been years, my dear. How are you enjoying the island? She's just scared of this man. He is a hulking beast of a creature. Um, very well. Oh, I apologize. I see that my visage is a little frightening for some. I get that a lot. I'm a big boy. <laughs> you sure are. You are. <laughs> Sir, would you like to perform in my show tomorrow? <laughs> oh, I'm not one for acting, dear boy. Stage fright and all that. It's hard enough to talk to the men on my crew. <laughs> I just look over at Onslow. How is he reacting to this hulking man? So I feel like Onslow is the type to not be intimidated by anyone, so I want to see what he's thinking. Onslow's still eating. He doesn't give a fuck. All right. That's, you know what? That is right in line with my expectations. Weird-ass humans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, son, do you have a problem with the humies? <laughs> what? No, no, no. I'm talking about, like, Onslow. Just, like, oh, oh, I thought you were, I thought you were talking. Oh, no, no, no. Be I, careful I, what I you am, say. Yeah, we're in role, pl- we are in role-play mode. Yeah, <laughs> and also he is he's Sheldon. He is a human. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, as straight-laced human as the day I was born from my mother. Yep. Sweet mother. Bet she was, she was a, some kind, a a poor soul. We came from smaller things, you know, even though I was the biggest boy around. <laughs> Eloy just softly starts accompanying him on the Oh no, please, Maestro, bring up the tone. <laughs> he's he's like bobbing his head and clapping along. This this is a this is a fucking lieutenant. Okay. This is a lieutenant, my my dudes. As Serple and Oso are just sitting there, just like, okay, can we get on with this, Gore? <laughs> oh yes, back to business. And I assume you were all having our fine cuisine here on the island. It's, it's quite delicious. Excellent. Oh, I see you're having some dagger fish. Yep. Was best, it... I, best I've had. Oh, son. By the way, you're looking. You probably had it only once. You're only skin and bones. He lifts your arm up oh. by two fingers. You're actually hoisted off the ground oh by boy. this man. This man is putting no effort in holding you up. <laughs> Me next! Me next! Oh, yes, yes yeah, of yeah, course! Please, if you could lift him up. Uh... <laughs> yeah! You are ten feet off the ground. Ten feet off the ground from this six foot two man. That is insane. <laughs> yeah, he just goes <laughs> just so lifts he him holds higher. You, holds you a lot and way over his head. <laughs> now spin me! Spin me! Whee! I'm gonna roll athletics for this man. <laughs> oh, don't worry, natural twenty. Hey, like a basketball. <laughs> yep. Every get, everybody, get up! It's time to slam now. <laughs> Ezra, you gotta try this. <sighs> Do Ezra. <laughs> Win in Rome, I guess. 
just put my little body up as if I'm like ready to be picked up. Like, he like gingerly grabs you by the back of your shirt. This Again, is, no this, effort. This is fun, I say. <laughs> yeah, in, in Clearly fear. Uncomfortable. In fear, this is fun. This is amazing. <laughs> uh, we we but, were here to negotiate trade. <laughs> oh, no, trade, of course, of yeah. course. <laughs> Please, tell us your story. Uh, well, uh, not to speak for Calliope or anybody in uh, Venom, but... Uh, they had been uh, attacked by a Wendigo some years ago, and it trans like as you may have known if you had sent any uh, sent any ships that way, it transformed the entire village into well the entire populace of the island into deers, except for poor Calliope here and uh, one kobold scribe that meant to hide away. He looks aghast by this. He's just like, is that why he's never answered any of my mails? Uh, yeah, yeah, in the uh, last eight <gasps> Who years. Who would have guessed that that poor bastard was in such peril? Uh, well, anybody that would have sent a scouting party, I suppose. Uh, but, yeah, uh, that entire island was turned into deer, and we uh, ended up uh, dealing with the Wendigo through no small effort, and now the town is rebuilding itself but it's uh, far from thriving. It still needs, uh, it needs aid and it needs trade. Oh, well, of course we can offer the defense while I'm sure, oh so, my lad, you can offer the trade. Yes, we are, we, like, oh so kind of like leans his head back, like out of his shell. <laughs> yes, of course, we, we would love to be able to assist Ibrakal in some way. Uh, we were told the uh, prince would be here to negotiate some trade as well. Oh, yes, the prince was off doing some recreational things as this is her of course, vacation. It's a, it's a party port, I understand. Indeed. Uh, but what is it you wish to discuss? Since we, I am the prince's ambassador, we can speak for him in, in this regard. Well, I did have one question. You see, we also traveled from an island... Uh, called Jahal Cove, and something was taken... The pirate port! Well, not so much anymore. Oh, yes, I've heard that report. It's been made into a... civil zone, as I was told. Yes, uh, well, unfortunately, some of the... Uh, someone from that port managed to uh, abscond with a treasure from one of our friend here's uh, people. Um, I point over to Ziaka. Ziaka. Ziaka's been sitting coiled up looking over at, she's looking at all of the gold that's on Oso's shell. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, this, this she's been gem. Star- she's been staring at me this whole time. Is that okay? Uh, yeah, it's fine. She just she as, she's as like, circles like like ready to reach out for her fucking giant scimitar, <laughs> and then Gore just holds his hand down. Oh, enough of that. I I just say uh, look, looking at Ziaka, she has a fascination with uh, precious metals and jewels, and as you are I'm sure aware, you're very well adorned, and uh, she is just fascinated by that, and then just looking straight at her. But she knows not to act on her fascinations, <laughs> not when there are people around. No, that is part of my pilgrimage, yes. Oh, a lady of penance, I understand. That's admirable. But the other part of this pilgrimage is to find this precious gem that was stolen from her uh, temple. Oh, and what does this have to do with the calls? Well, we aren't exactly sure, but uh, we've been following a sort of magical tracker for this gem, and it led us here. She says it's very nearby. We aren't sure if the calls are nearby, but if they could uh, give us any assistance whatsoever, we would be very grateful. I describe the uh, collective one's heart, and I tell them the kind of uh, peril that the island might be in if it is not returned. Okay. Well, uh, Mr. Gore 
is rather upset that something that powerful has somehow found its way here on this island, if indeed it is. He'll put in a report to the rest of his men to comb the area with as discreetly as possible. Well, I, I don't want to uh, point fingers, but there was a fine day boardwalk company where this jewel was held, and the fact that they're just hap this happens to be where it's headquartered, it, it's not lost on me. Oh, I see. Uh, uh, Serple and Oso kind of like turn to look, talk to each other and start speaking in, uh, oh God, I forget what the fucking... Whatever the angel language yeah, is. Yeah, I forget what the The language angel. that none of us speak. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you guys have some way to want to communicate with that. <laughs> I can <laughs> write comments. I just, ima I just imagine Latin. <laughs> yeah, let's go with that. Asimar, whatever. Asimar <laughs> talk. Uh, they begin to start talking to each other as Serpil turns to uh, a couple of the regiment of the guard and like point to them and, sa and point over to the giant dome. We will see if what your claims are are put together. We will speak to the leader of the. Uh, we will speak to the leader of the Fine Day Boardwalk Company, and we will question him for such a device. Well, thank you very much. Uh, with your permission, we would also like to be able to run our own investigation into this, as this was our task heading from that cove. We are technically contracted to bring it back. I don't mean to be foul in saying this, as Serpil says. I am absolutely, I am trying my best to not be foul to the language of your people in of any course. way possible but we would rather it be kept to a call situation. We would rather the calls be the ones to handle justice here. Well, this is our ju country. Justice, just fine, but... And investigation. Oh, so if we should come across anything, we should tell you. Yes. Hmm. Tell us or tell the admiral, or tell the uh, lieutenant here. I think that's fair. I feel like we can... Though we were charged with this, I feel like we can work together as a group on finding such things. We would like to have it as such. There is, there is bountiful reward if your claims are true in your favor. There you go. It's not that we're barred from looking into this. It's just that we can't act on our own, which I think, I just <laughs> look at Sheldon, I, I think is a fair charge. I can agree. There we go. He says with an asterisk <laughs> under his voice. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, so with that, you pretty much have just been given your word that the calls will look into this investigation. So will the Navy. As of right now, you are all in their good graces as of uh, for telling them about Calliope's woes. Uh, Calliope has been assured that a regiment of guards and a regiment of trade is on their way to uh, Venon Island to assist them in rebuilding the town. For the most part... Uh, you, for actually being able to get here and get this information to them, they actually will pay you a small stipend reward. They will give everyone from the, uh, on the crew of the Yeldon 5,000 gold each. Jesus. Ooh. I'm rich again. I, I just never seem to be not rich for long. I'm glad I just updated my money. because I Well, you are speaking to, like, a country that is built on being d d insanely yeah. loaded with trade. As a monk, I never know what to spend this stuff on. <laughs> Is there so why I always spend it on frivolities, like masks. Yep. <laughs> o Oso then turns to you. Well, in service for the areas around the calls, is there anything else you seem to seek that we can assist you with? Apart from this investigation, of course, which I apologize if Serpil was rude in any way, shape, or form to your respective languages, but we would like to keep all... We would like to keep all situations that involve the calls as call, uh, 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 within the calls uh, justice system. Well, Correct. if it's not too much trouble, we would appreciate it if uh, the members of our crew could get a like each get a room at the inn for uh, as long as this investigation might take to pan out. We can't offer you the inn. However, we can offer you rooms at the estate. No. Well, that would work. Of course. Uh, we can, uh, for the time being, uh, you're welcome to stay about the island. Uh, you're welcome to walk about the island. There is lots more attractions to be had, and a lot more other, uh, a lot more other merchants are open very late at night. 
This place is very lively at night, as it is, of course, a resort island for those of the nobility here. But when you feel you are ready to rest, uh, he starts writing off uh, little parchments. He hands you small slips of paper. This will get you inside the assembly. Oh. Please come at your convenience when you feel you are ready to rest. Thank you. Uh, Thank and you. Mr. Oso, uh, about that contract dissolvement that we talked about earlier, could you have that dress delivered to Miss Calliope's room? Of course. All right. Thank you. Yeah, Oso is very eager to help out. Like, this man looks like he's ready to, like, make sure that everything's in the best interest of not only the calls, but the people who are around him who are assisting the calls. So you guys are pretty fucking loaded up helping out the calls. That was a good choice. Always about that. Which, you know what, speaking of, uh, since, we're, since we're all here, you know, just offering to help each other out, um, I, I've heard word in our, in our travels about uh, these savage children that seem to be bothering you people. Uh, since we'll be traveling around kind of in the general area, I was wondering if there's any information on them that you would like to share uh, so that we might be able to help you with them as well. Oh, well, you could talk to me about that. Oh. What do you intend to do? Are you looking for the bounty on them? I, you know, anything to help us, uh, you know, make ends meet and such, and, uh, you know, just offering helping hands to those who help us. Oh, well, son, I'd like you to come to the fort at any time of your leisure. We can discuss business. Excellent. Thank you very much. No, thank you. Um, and also, Lieutenant Gore, you might you might actually know this. Uh, do you know anything of a Darum Lockwood? Uh, oh, the Admiral in near Zealous, of course. Okay. He's a bit of a pious idiot, if you ask me. <laughs> oh, that's that's how I uh, have heard him described by some. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure you said South Zealous, right? He's still there. Yes. Oh, that's terrific. I I had heard word from Ave Lo uh, earlier uh, in our. Oh, travels. you know, little Lo. That's a Adorable. <laughs> she was a fun, fun uh, com uh, comrade. Oh, son, you don't need to be, you don't need to be polite with me. She's a stick in the butt. A little bit, a little but you bit, know, yes. just yeah. <laughs> but she had told me that uh, I would be able to find Darum. I'm actually looking for him. Uh, he, 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 and I, uh, we, we've met before, uh, just a long, long time ago. Uh, and I was just wondering what he's been up to. And uh, she had informed me that he would be in South Zealous, just wanting to confirm that since, you know, looking into meeting him and such. Well, it's not my place to give out meetings and such. I am only ported out here. Of but course. I can send word when it's your time to leave this island. And you could head over there, and maybe we can get a little bit more acquainted, if oh, you that will. That would be great. I mean, it's going to be a bit of an informal meeting. No no need to get everything too involved. Just, you know, curious as to his whereabouts, that kind of thing. Of course. Well, how about this? You do me a little bit of a solid with these savage children, and I'll let them know you're on their way. Absolutely. Uh, just, you know, looking out, looking to help people where we can is kind of the uh, Lockwood Natural Wonder way. Amazing. What was the name of that place again? He like actually takes out a little notepad and like a small pen that's not even the size <laughs> of his fingers. He's it, like, it's a small pink little binder book, by the way. <laughs> uh, he was he was wanting to know what our establishment is. Yeah. Okay. The Lockwood Natural Wonders. And where is your ship docked, if I may ask? Uh, it's currently docked at the uh, the call port, actually. I the believe. Merchant port. Or the mer the merchant port. Yes. Oh no, it's not there anymore. We'll bring it over to the Carl's port for you. Excellent. Thank you very much. Is there anything else you want to ask any of these guys? Uh, yeah, there was a kindly young man at the, uh, young cat at the uh, merchant port that seemed to be doing a great job. I just want to put in a good word for uh, Pistachio. He was, he was a real help to us. And if any of you uh, know this cat, just, just treat him well. He's a good guy. <laughs> Our DM brandishes a gun. <laughs> just putting in a good word for somebody that was kind to us. He was a real good boy. What a nut, that one. Gave us a shell of a time. <laughs> I was green with envy, let me tell you what. <laughs> you know what? I will put in a good word. Excellent. Thank you. With the town guard, because he's a known thief. What? what? Not what? our pistachio. Wait, I wasn't there for that. I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> no I take way. back. I take back what Ezra said. Sorry. 
He was so helpful. He He's dies. <laughs> he was doing <laughs> such a good job. Well, I guess you never know a person. <laughs> you think you know a guy. After all the good times we had. Okay, the DM will now redact all of that shit because that is purely out of spite. Because he, the DM unfortunately made this character with a base name and now everyone is attached to him but has absolutely nothing written down for him. So you understand. <laughs> well, I'm not, dies! That's why I'm not asking to have him on the I mean, I party. Like, I feel like a realistic response would be that the, none of these people would know him. Yeah, it's like just, no, none of these... That's why I gave the name and where he worked. <laughs> Just be like, oh, all right. Okay. Thanks. Neat. Yeah. Okay. So now we return from your DM's uh, mental breakdown back to the actual game. <laughs> Very well. Thank you. All right. Is there anything else you guys want to do before the night closes? Because at this point, uh, they're pretty much, you're just enjoying dinner with everyone. You're getting acquainted. Unless you want to make small talk with these people, you can move on to do one more thing before we close out the night. Uh, I'm going to grab a big old haunch of meat for Nedra. And. Basically, I intend to return to her in order to <laughs> get tell her about order. her fight tomorrow. All right. Um, I real quick just back on the on the topic of um, finding the collected one's heart. Uh, I I just look at Ziaka and basically go, are are the terms okay with you? Uh, is there anything? She's not responding. She's just nodding blankly. But you can roll an insight check. All right, man. So I'm gonna do. Nat twenty. Hey. Wow, we. It's going in one ear and way the fuck out the other. She she's looking to go rogue. Oh jeez. She th th this is not acceptable to her. Um, I would I would just like to ask. I know you said you wanted to keep this all uh, for the calls, and we you know sort of agreed that we would all work together. Um, I would kind of I would like to appoint Ziaka as our liaison with you. Uh, as far as the goings on with that, it is it is her. It's people. incredibly important to her people. Yeah, it is her people who are threatened by this. I feel like if anyone should be the first to know any information you gather, uh, it would be her. Uh, and it's I understand that you want to keep this as as close to the to the vest as possible, but it is just my humble request that the person suffering the most from this, uh, you know, would be informed and you know basically be on the up and up as much as possible. Who you are guys. you speaking this to? Uh, I am saying this uh, to... Uh, I guess say. both parties involved? No, yeah. E either Oso, or like, but who are you trying to aim it towards? Because either Oso or Gore. Uh, I'm going to say Oso seemed to be more into keeping it close to the vest. Gore seemed, you know... Roll persuasion. Sure. Not as good. Uh, but, uh, 16. Don't worry, because fucking Oso rolled shittily. So, <laughs> not in that one, but he rolled pretty bad. Uh, well, when we, you return to the estate, I will actually, she looks over to, he looks over to Ziaka. If you wouldn't mind, we could speak in private, and we would gladly see if there's any way that we could benefit from each other's information and what the whereabouts or any, any way you have of tracking down this item. Thank you very much. It's just, you know, it's... Ziaka will remember this. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I understand how important this is, and I realize that to you, this is just, a, you know, perhaps a crime that has been permitted on your premises. To her, this is much more, and it just matters a lot to me that we make sure that justice is served for all parties. Yes, we understand. It's You, you must understand that there are other accounts we must make hold of. Absolutely. Okay. While we do, we do wish to make sure that Venon Island is taken care of, we, d you are a band of, he looks to all of you, looks back at Onslow, who's like just now eating the bones. Just trying to get to the marrow. Oh no, he's, he has no problem. <laughs> what, you want some? <laughs> yeah, I'll. His, his, his head shrinks back into his shell a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you all seem to be privateers. That's a fair, a fair label. We're, we're kind of a ragtag group as it is. We haven't really defined ourselves as an entire unit, so I'll, I'll accept privateer. Well, we, we can assist you in any way we can, but we assume that as long as you can follow by the call's rules or at least try to stick to them as best as possible. Oh, no, you stick to them. <laughs> as Gorlick like, looks at you. No, you stick to them. I will not have... Chaos in my port. As you watch, when he says that, 
That cigar <laughs> smell just fucking hit Erupts. everyone. Like, I, just kind of, I, I just kind of imagine like Ren and Stimpy veins everywhere. Oh yeah, Chaos! yeah. But it's raw. <laughs> <laughs> Two stupid dogs. That, <laughs> that one. Mm -hmm. You are gagging profusely. <gasps> that is not. That is not just smoke you inhaled. That's pure fire. Was this, a, was this a con, con yeah. check? Sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear you say that. Uh, I got a 10. 18. You, everyone except Eloy. Eloy's just sitting there like... <laughs> Every, everyone in the pit of your stomachs, you feel your insides. like You feel like just the breath from your lungs escape and is taken away from you. Like... Physically, you Ooh. felt like a, a hand just reached in, grabbed your lungs, and ripped them out. So just that's the burning sensation you got. Been knocked out of us. So I'm gonna roll damage for that real quick. <laughs> Meanwhile, Eloy's just sitting there. Yeah, Eloy wasn't breathing in when it happened. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. No. Even fucking Serple and Oso are taking all of this. Everyone Damn. in the whole vicinity is gagging on this smog that has just been emitted from this man. This is nine points of fire damage. God. Sorry, you are pungent. Oh, I'm sorry. I just get so flustered when things go awry, and I don't they like haven't. it. haven't. No, of course not. Even? I just don't like it when they do. What can I say, Lieutenant? You run a tight ship. As a captain, I... <laughs> I aspire to... He slapped <clears> you on the back of your... On, on the back. I aspire to have... Whew. Just, just such devotion to, to, you know, order and justice. It's uh, quite admirable of you. You'd make a fine sailor, son. I hope I already do, but thank you very much. And that, uh, before we close out, uh, so you guys have anything else you want to say before uh, this dinner is concluded? Just really wanted to get that point with Ziaka across. Yep. Other than that, I think I'm good. All right, so... You guys go off and do your own thing. Onslow goes bugger off elsewhere. Grammy's been in the stall the whole time. She's, yeah. she's, been, she's been staring out of a stall this whole time, looking at you like, this is mine now. What I happened, to, what happened to its tenant, Grammy? <laughs> he went home for dinner. Oh, good. Oh, Grammy, we can't just take, we can't just say things are ours and suddenly they are. We, I mean, You've been around. You you know what you know how things work. You can't just claim this is yours. Did you did you purchase this? Did you ask permission? <laughs> Sinks down. <laughs> so does uh, somebody want to stop by, <coughs> stop by the brothel and let Scrung know what we're up to? I was gonna go say I was gonna go grab Nedra from the port. I can do that. All right. So then we'll. We'll cut this session at you with the brothel. So let's go. So you head over to the brothel. You are now at, let me double check where this is on here. Do, 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 do. Uh, number nine. Yep. So push yourself all the way to nine. You are actually right in front of the estate. Oh, perfect. Nice. That's where I'll head next. You walk inside to an establishment, a three-story building known as the Cactus Rose. You walk inside. There is a... Woman behind the counter, as you could just feel the pungent smell of, of incense. Uh, incense. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> in you know what? You know what? Good the, smells. Good smells. The, the, candles. Okay. Candles. Boom. The citrus rose. This was called what? <laughs> <laughs> Very relaxed in here. Okay. Candles. Okay. I'm not gonna fuck that up. I apologize. <laughs> Delicious candles. Come in. Yeah, a bunch of scented candles. Uh, there's a bunch of lanterns giving this room like a bunch of a lot of mood. There's a bunch of cactuses with flowers, like really, really well adorned flowers. These are like things that you have never seen before. I assume uh, Ezra has never been to a desert before. Nah, not really a desert guy. A lot of uh, a lot of very well. Uh, well-designed uh, I'm sorry, rugs like draped across the wall. A lot of depictions of the elephant again along the like yeah. uh, sides here. Like again, the elephant is a very big deal to this uh, civilization. Recognizing a theme. You uh, head over to the. Uh, <laughs> you head over to the reception uh, reception desk. Uh, there's a green-skinned woman, almost looking the same as Gloriosa. She turns around, like. Her skin almost looks like it has a layer of plush to it, but she and she gives off this weird plant-like smell, 
there is a flower in her hair and also that looks like part of what's making her like robe at the bottom go down. Roll a knowledge check. It's like nature or... Na uh, yeah, let's go with nature. Uh, seven. You have, the, all you know is that this woman reminds you of Gloriosa okay. back at Jahal Cove. Uh, uh, hello, hey. sir. Welcome to the Desert Rose. Hi. Uh, lovely place you have here. Um, I was wondering, uh, a compatriot of mine uh, came by earlier today. I wanted to see if he was still here. Short fellow, goblin, uh, probably kind of a bad attitude, although here he might have sweetened up a bit. Oh, yes. Uh, we had a customer like that come in here a few hours ago. I believe he's still in his session. Excellent. Uh, for him. Yeah. <laughs> he's been here for a while. Uh, is there any way, I, I don't know how... Uh, I, how things work here? If you if you could just get his attention for me, if we'd that's rather not disturb the customers unless there was a a very <laughs> very very ill reason to bring him out. Excellent, uh, that's fine. He can continue with the session. Uh, I just want to let him know uh, that uh, could I could I leave a message for him that you could get them once the session is through? Oh well, just one moment. I can double check and see how long he has. Sure. Uh, he she uh she leaves behind the counter. She comes back. Well, good news. The session is almost up. He just needs to give payment, and then he'll be ready to uh, ready for you at any given time. At any given time. Terrific. You see, Scrung just walk out. There's a fucking giant smile on his face. Today's a good day. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to hear, my boy. Ah, hello, Ezra. How are you doing? Doing fine, Scrung. Nice, so to, am nice I. to see you. So am I. So am I. <laughs> yeah, we've had a bit of a day. I just wanted to let you know uh, we've we've kind of moved port. Uh, we had a conversation with the calls. Things went very well, swimmingly as I could hope. Uh, we'll actually be staying in their uh, their embassy that's just kind of right across the street from here. Oh, really? You don't say? Yeah. Well, uh, so why don't we go ahead and talk about that? Here you go, sweetheart. You like hands her like a bar of gold as tip. Wow. Must have treated you real nice. Oh, I've uh, I needed something like this for a long time. <laughs> so come on, let's uh, let's talk. I, I gotta tell you a couple of things. I have been doing some digging. Great. He doesn't say that out loud. Yeah. He, when you guys when you guys leave, I he understand. says it in Thieves Can. <laughs> no, he doesn't say it in oh. Thieves Can at all. He doesn't even say it. I'm just like, okay, this is what he's got for you. When you guys finally leave, and you like, he actually like asks you to follow him to like an area where there's like a back alley. Yep. So like right there. <laughs> Actually, no, I'm sorry. He leaves uh, around the corner. No, no, no. Yeah, there you go. Like, right there. Make sure... Uh, both of you guys roll me a sneak check. I think it's just me and him. Yep. Oh, sorry. Uh, 24. All right, well, giving his stature and size, you can cover for him. Like, just... Guessing he wasn't quite as good a roll? No, he wasn't quite as good a roll. No, he had a good time. <laughs> his <laughs> legs are still a little wobbly. Yeah. So, uh... Had a few uh, few talks with some of the ladies inside there. He like whips out a cigarette. <laughs> you don't say. Beyond that. <laughs> so uh, I heard they've been hauling some really big crate into the Carl's estate. Really? Something that uh, hummed. Something that had a lot of magic energy to it. Something that a lot of the uh, a lot of the folks down at the port seem to want to keep hush hush. But uh. A few sweet talks here, a few kisses there, and uh, talking to someone who knows someone down at the boardwalk a little bit. Turns out that uh, the Kyles are kind of holding on to that uh, big old star that the snake's all about. Really? It's not here. It's actually going to be held over at the uh, carnival. Apparently, our, our kindly little prince, or whoever wants to grab at it, is paying top dollar for this. Hmm. So the calls know about it. Yep. Interesting. That calls know all about it, and they want to make sure that someone at the Fine Day Boardwalk Company makes this a straight laced deal. Hmm. Interesting. Because we uh, we talked to uh, a representative of theirs and explained the situation from our end, and they seem pretty happy to to help with the investigation. And sounds like a cute little way to kiss ass and make sure that you just follow the rules so they can get it over with. Yeah. Hmm, that might complicate things a bit more. Should have figured things were going a little too well. Hmm. Oh, well, at least we get a kick-ass bed. Yeah, 
We uh, we at least sweet talked them enough to convince them that we <laughs> think that everything's on the up and up. But that's as far as I was willing to go deep, though. Apparently, uh, the fine days got their hands in almost everything here. So far, the only thing that they haven't been able to touch is the call. Uh, n not so much the calls, but all I know is is that that uh, there's a gore fella. Yeah. Big, huge boy who uh, runs the entire uh, Navy here. We met him, actually. Oh, you did, huh? Jovial guy. He's the only one who hasn't been touched by uh, by the Fine Day Boardwalk Company. They're way too afraid to start any shit with him. Excellent. Well, he seems like a good guy. We might need to have an extra conversation with him, but we can figure that stuff out once we get everybody together. But thanks, Scrong. Actually, means a lot to me that you would take... Uh, you know, this kind of vacation time and help the group. Hey. Sometimes when your uh, hobbies and your work come together at the same time, you know, it's kind of a beautiful thing. Glad to hear it. So let me tell you about this girl I met. Ah, <laughs> spare no details, my friend. That's they what we're in. Yeah, they say wandering <laughs> off into the distance. Yeah. She had legs like a bat. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on the uh, sea with no action, be, man. That might be the end of uh, today's session, but we still got some fan art to go through. Oh, here. yes. Ooh, nice. A lot of great ones. So let's kick on over to the high seas, and we'll see what we got here. Let me pull out my phone. I keep forgetting to do this. Do, do, handy do, dandy. Do, 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 Twitums. Do, do. No worries. Oh, wait. Here's an even better part I would love to go. I really, I kind of wish I didn't end it there, but because I just want to go, oh yeah, by the way, I dipped into your savings a little bit to get some pay on this. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a conversation about that later. <laughs> of course I'm smiling. I used your paycheck. <laughs> okay, because uh, number one, it's a character near and dear to everyone's heart. Uh, we all love him. It's our boy, Pistachio! <laughs> he looks so <laughs> just uh, done with it. <laughs> <laughs> This is Pistachio by Sarah Howard, a.k.a. Rose Blood Wolf on Twitter. Thanks, Sarah. Thank can't you so much, time. Sarah. You're, you're bringing... You just look so ready for work. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. I can't wait for next session. <laughs> you're, you're bringing so much... You just bring so much life to our boy Pistachio's eyes. We love him. He's great and so helpful. Was some guy named Pistachio that stowed the heart. <laughs> <laughs> and number, uh, number two we got here uh, is... There we go. Yeah, yeah. Ezra... Uh, this is kind of like a little Sakura moment for him, just like <laughs> between Wake and Ned. Like, this is at the part where Wake and Nedra are having their epic battle. Uh, his little shadow self is like, stop being so cool! <laughs> Meanwhile, his real self. <laughs> they're just they're just exercising. They're just trying to kill each other, folks. Move on. This is by uh, Andrew Holmes, a.k.a. at Sockhat underscore Andy on Twitter. Thanks, Andy. Thanks so much. Sounds great. Next up. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, here's uh, Caitlin, who uh, I see now on Twitter has commissions open. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, so this is at Caitlin C37. This is our uh, favorite half shark man. Good old Pliskin. Yeah, getting his gills and his teeth out. Like, he, he looks like he's about to go full Pennywise on a motherfucker. So fucking cool, Again, though. Again, really glad none of us have confronted him about this. <laughs> 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 It seems to what be are you about? <laughs> it seems to be a night time, yeah. at least. Well, he said full moon. Yeah. And uh, next up, we have uh, by Cherry T, who Ooh. also says uh, commissions are open, or at Tigress458. This is a little casual Nedra with her new, uh, <laughs> new club. Yeah, her new club. Big back. Her new healing stick. Yeah, her new healing <laughs> stick. Her uh, baseball bat. She's getting ready to uh, swing for the fences. Little slugger. Yes, her great. little slugger. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, uh, Tigress458. Next down here, uh, this is uh, Convictora. Ah. Dope. Yeah, is, uh, looks, I, I like, the, little, I, I like the I like the fur pattern on him. Uh, this is by Braveheart, a.k.a. at Volunteer Brave H. <laughs> I really, really hope that like we were all nervous about this guy and just like, oh my gosh, is he like gonna be the new, the, like the next big villain or something? <laughs> and then we just go to this college, like, nah, yeah, he just works here. Nah, yeah, he's like that. Just don't worry. <laughs> he's, just, he's just creepy by trade. <laughs> hey, you don't know. I, I yeah, was gonna say, really like, don't. I was gonna say, part of me hopes he is like the secret shady, scary man. Another part of me hopes that we were absolutely scared of nothing. <laughs> 
Next up by Cat Sage Green, aka at Sage Green Cat. There's a uh, Ziaka holding a whole bunch of her coins and uh, <laughs> like dripping from her scales, just trying, just trying to keep a hold of all of her treasures. What I didn't do that anything. She ransacked from Venom. Yeah, I didn't do anything. No, I, I have nothing. Scandalabra sticking out of her cloak. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Ca- uh, Cat Sage Green. Next up, uh, loading, 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 scrolling down. Trying to see who this is by, but this is uh, Nedra giving Wake the uh, hug that made the bleat heard around the world. <laughs> oh, this is Cat Sage Green again. Ah. At Sage Green Cat. Uh, Nedra hugging, hugging little deer wake. <laughs> Actually, She's I, like, I, he's I so cute. I can't see it from here, but is she grabbing him by the throat too, or is that his tongue sticking out? Uh, he has a little billy goat beard, kind of like Wake. Oh, has, okay, okay. So. I didn't know what that was. I thought she was like just grabbing him by the throat, like yeah. No, she's no, she's hugging him by the by the tummy. Just <laughs> <laughs> he's so cute. Next up, uh, by Scandranin zero one. Nice. At Scandranin zero one, this is uh, Nedra about to swing for the fences. Uh, I liked it on her. Uh, uh, Jersey, it's The Wonders, and her number is 666. <laughs> <laughs> I can appreciate that. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, this is by, the next one is by Daniel Ooh. Troop. Uh, Calliope making Wake's heart go doki doki after she tells him he has many talents. Like, I, uh, uh, I guess, I, I mean, I don't know. Talents? <laughs> I got some, I guess. I punch things real good. I'm good at punching. It's, it's why I teach Nedra. I mean, uh, <laughs> I haven't punched a goddamn thing since we got off Jungle. You punched Onslow. That doesn't count. He was a zombie, sort of. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I love that one. Just embarrassed little, like, crush struck wake. Uh, uh. Uh, next one we have uh, by Caitlin and uh, Caitlin C again. Uh, this is uh, Best Boy Risp, just a little <laughs> embarrassed Cobalt. Hey, I'm gonna be a he god so one day. Concerned. I'm gonna be a god. <laughs> I stared at entropy and I stared back at it and said, "Fuck you." <laughs> <laughs> again, she has commissions open, so feel free to hit her up on Twitter. Uh, next we have by Sean Chill McGuire, aka at uh, Chidori Chan. This is uh, Nedra holding on to her stuffed her stuffed deer. <laughs> it's a, like I imagine that's like five year old Nedra. It's like mm. it's mine. She looks so sassy. This is my deer. She's like sleepy Nedra, just waking <laughs> up. Oh, I love it. it. It's it's great to get like cute little Nedra art. Chibi Nedra. Speaking of uh, Nedra being sort of adorable, this next Nedra face I can only describe as <laughs> Nappa face. <laughs> yeah. She's blankly staring with that toothy grin. I'm gonna yep. punch that. This is by at Z Polar Bear, Z E E Polar Bear 77 on Twitter, aka Owen, uh, directly after giving <laughs> Onslow the Heimlich <laughs> maneuver. <laughs> I just love him so <laughs> uh, ne- Just Nedra's face just cracks me up on this one, just like, he. <laughs> I punched him good. Uh, next, how do you guys feel about? About. about heists. Ah, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> this is uh, Lee on a roll, L I O N A R O L L, aka Lisa uh, Stayert. I probably butchered that name, but I just love this face. Ezra's face there. How do you feel about heists? I want to be a responsible captain and do all the things we do. But I am still a trickster and love to scheme. I think. I think next episode we are going to have uh, quite a heist <laughs> to plan. Mm. I'm gonna see that mask of yours and be like, "Ooh, that's a good idea. We all need to go in disguise." <laughs> Persona. <laughs> yes. Never see it coming. Uh, next up, probably my favorite use of colors this week by Shannon L. Leet. This is a uh, Kali awake on a date. Uh, I, I love the uh, the blues and the reds and. Yeah, I really like that sky. Like, that yeah. looks yeah. awesome. Let's see. Think is that the last one or is there one more? more. There's one more. Okay. Uh, this next one by Jasper Lind, aka at Jasper PRL. What I can only describe as wake as an Ed Hardy tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> His face just Argh! as he emerges from the water, still merman. The fiery Hadoken wake. <laughs> or sure sure you can wake. 
Uh, I absolutely love this one. Thank you so much, Jasper Lind, and thank all of you so much for contributing lovely fan art. I'm sorry I'm not able to show off everything, but we do have a timetable to stick to. I try to get at least, like, I try to get 15 a week. Uh, sorry if yours doesn't get featured. Uh, we love all of them, though. Like, yeah, they're all we, amazing. We all we see them all. Like, they're, like yeah, and, just, I, and, I try, and I try to and I try to feature new artists, but some of the like some of the artists like Caitlin or uh, Jasper, like so, some some of the artists just like man, I, Jack, I gotta throw Marvel. this out. Well, yeah, and it's rough when they like they kind of depict it just like perfect as we kind of envision it in our imaginations. Mm -hmm. So it's just like I can't I pass can't this not. up. Yeah, uh, thank you guys all so much for, uh, and we can kick it back to a regular cam here now. Thank you so much for joining us here this week. We were very excited about what's to come next week. We hope you are too. Oh, uh, yeah. Stay tuned for some bit drops and sub call outs. But other than that, we'll see you guys next week at the table. The episode where pistachio dies.